morning, morning. Morning all, morning, morning. Morning, Roxanne. Roxanne, I haven't seen my rooms again. Yes, I'm gonna see. Let's see what we're going on here. There it is, okay. Thank you so much. Gee, Dimple 66, morning. <laughs> yes, Roxanne, we're doing this, sweeping time. I need to pull back that song. Oriagani, morning, Alin Lewis, morning. Nicola, good morning, mom. Rukman Gangadin, morning, Carol Boyce, John, morning. Let me see here. Nicola says, we are still in February. Yes, it's the 29th of February. We are in Alipia. Yes, so we have an extra day. Two months gone in 2024. It's already two months old. Um. I often wonder how do people born on the 29th celebrate their birthday? Well, they have a choice. I understand they can celebrate it on, on the 28th of February or the 1st of March or both. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Cyril Mayas, morning. Gerald Pascal, Pascal Manzuel, morning to you. Deborah Duranti, morning. Kathy Belfon, Bill Tupid, morning. Neil Francois, always present. Morning, sir. Proud to be Trini. Good morning, Charm Rich. Morning to you, Ruben Rogers. Emerson Brown, morning, guys. Kennedy Joseph, Donna Walcott. Good morning to all of you. Doreen, Harry, Rutrude. Alex Neptune, Maltea, morning. Let's see who's on Facebook. John Edwards, Claire Carrington, morning. Andrea Innes, morning to you, Andrea. Deborah, again, morning. Morning, Dian. Anne Marie Billy, Adriana Alexis, morning. Anton Batiste, morning to you. Marlon Cloud, Dylan Jackson, morning. Alison Boys, morning, Alison. Let's see who else we have there. Ruth Fronten, morning to you. Joy Ragunana, morning, Joy. Keith Marshall, good show, morning. Kathy Ania Wood, morning to you, Annette Baird. Morning, Eric Lumsden. What's this there? Julie Bowen, morning, guys. Let's see. Emmeline Harvey, morning to you. Maria Lyons, morning, Maria. Janice Matthews, Kevin Thomas, morning, folks. Pamela O'Connor. Good morning to His Excellency Nigel O'Connor, President of Pleasantville, First Lady Mauricia Keegan, Margaret Mark, morning, Claire Irish, morning, Claire, Jenny Joseph, 
Good morning to you, Alessia Armando Roche. Good morning to all of you guys. Let's see what's out there. We do. Right. It is 6.39. On this, the 29th day of February, 2024. Where does the time go? Right. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Trying to lose some weight. The UNC is making it very difficult for me. This is me every day for the last five days or so. Yeah. I stopped drinking soft drink. So my, my boy, my boy, man, would I say, you need a large popcorn and a large Coke when you have to take in the, um, the UNC. <laughs> so, it is my situation now. All that is happening for the folks on the other side. The alternative to the PNM is chaos and confusion. How many times? Alessia says shit. <laughs> I can, I can, what's happened, Alessia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So um never a dull moment, eh? And we 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 are seeing it playing out again. The alternative to the PNM is chaos and confusion. Whenever we talk about that, folks on the other side, the other sides, let me see. Always like to chastise PNM. People are saying that right. But if we draw our minds back to all the other times that everybody else except the PNM has been in power. We saw what happened in 1986. Nara. Pandey and his faction and they boss up. And then it led to Pandey forming Club 88 and whatnot and eventually the UNC and so on. Come forward to 1995, 2001, back in Bacchanal You all remember what led to the collapse of Pandey's, what should have been his second tomb. Bacchanal, again with Ralph, Sudama, Ramesh, and the whole lot of them. Mm -hmm. And then again in 2010, we know that unholy alliance that didn't take long to mash up. And then we cast our minds to Tobago. Now we tell them now, 2021, PDP, let me fix this. That's the way to go. It's a new thing. PNM, nothing. Mm hmm How long did that last? No time at all back and all between Pali and Watson. Confusion, chaos. Right. You still can't recover up to this day. But here we are. So the the alliance, the accommodation still in its embryonic stage. And it seems they've had an abortion. So it seems. So every day is something new. I know the PNM has a philosophy, and perhaps that's why the PNM is the oldest surviving party in this country. Because for years we've heard the PNM's mantra, the PNM's philosophy is we do not air your dirty linen in public. But the UNC, they don't subscribe to that. They feel that they need to hang a line in the front yard and knock a pan, according to what's this guy's name, Wade Mark? Remember? When he wanted to catch a, a squirrel, squirrel. As a young child, you had to knock a pan. And the squirrel used to get malkadi. Yeah. So they had to hang a line in the front yard, you know. PNM in the back. You say here what? You know, I'm not dirty laundry. You say anything nasty, get that inside. Then hang it up on the front line and make noise so the neighbors could know you're hanging out close. They can't help themselves. And it is causing an upheaval. They're fighting with everybody. The UNC fighting with the Mahasabha. They fighting with NTA. They fighting with the PNM. And now they fighting with themselves. Among themselves. Within the party. Right? Because of the utterances of their leader. Mm -hmm. Again, it goes to demonstrate the fact that Kamala Pasabi says is a very poor judge of character. And we, we continue to see. So the statement she made about under the Pandey administration, supporters and members were treated like sheep. 
And she was so upset whenever they used to refer to members as, as she. And she used to get her very vexed. From 1995 to 2010, under the leadership of Bandy, you were so upset when the membership and supporters were referred to or treated like sheep. What did you do? What did you do? Did you stand up to Mr. Pandey and say, no, I can't do that? Oh, we could do that. No, you didn't do that. Did you voice your concern to anybody? Here we are, almost 30 years later since Pandey took, um, since Pandey was, first became prime minister, and you now decide to talk about this? So it was self before the supporters. You were so concerned about your own political stocks that you didn't care about the supporters, how they were referred to. When you gave your no woman, no cry speech in 2007, after Pandey promised you the leadership of the party and handed it to Dukaran. Why didn't talk about it then? That was the opportunity you and Ascendancy should I leave. You talk about it. Not no, you stay there and allow the, the membership to continue to take the abuse. And then today, after Pandey has passed on and is unable to defend himself, you now come to make this statement. And it is not sitting well with a lot of people in the United National Congress because there are still some folks who are loyal to the Pandey legacy, right? And while they've accepted Pasad Bizesa as their leader, um, the fact is that there are still people who will always hold fast to the fact that Pandey started the UNC and all that they perceive that he did. So that even if she says something that is disparaging of Mr. Pandey, even if there are those who may not come out and speak, there are some who will, but there are those who behind closed doors will grumble and mumble and say, well, wrong with she, well, just that the other name is. And I wonder if Mrs. Pasabi Sessa has ever pondered what her legacy will be, what people will say about her, what will the membership of the UNC say about her when she is no longer here. And you have those who will continue to say she was the best prime minister and she was the best prime minister. But you ask them, what made her the best prime minister? And the same answers you will get. She built, she built 106 school, she built a hospital, she paved road, and at least under Kamla, the roads was good. And she gave people, she used to help the people, and the cost of living under Kamla was, was much lower than it is today. What role did she play in that? What role? The fact that the only thing she ever did was to mamagai and fool the population by saying she removed that out of 7,000 food items. And you say that the cost of living was, went, was low under her because of that. So she removed that of her 7,000 food items. So what about everything else that was vatable? Hmm? What about the building supplies and the hardware? When you decide to build a house, did you take that off of that? Did you reduce the VAT on that? When you wanted to buy a brand new car, what was the VAT you paid on that? 15% that? When you want to buy school books and uniform and school supplies for your kids, what, what was the rate of VAT you paid? 15%. But they love to talk about, oh, the cost of living under Kamala was much, was much better than under Rowley. So Dr. Rowley goes and he goes to every, every business and tells them increase their prices. Eh? Yeah, cost of living was better under her. Because she removed that of her 7,000 food items and it was a flop. A waste. There was no benefit to the citizens. In fact, it put them in a worse off position. And the article is there. VAT on food flops. Just pull it up and you'll see the Guardian article and you can read it. I ain't gonna read it again. So, especially, and this is for the, the new UNC supporters who might be listening. There was no real benefit. But you see, you all are so wedded to this narrative because they, 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 it's, so, it's so ingrained in your mind that you cannot accept cognitive dissonance. Even when you're presented with facts and truth, you can't accept that. So it's the pivot and talk about something else. Yeah? But everything that she left 15% VAT on. He'd probably reduce the VAT to 12.5%. So that everybody now wants to buy a new car. They're calling us Vessel Nation. Everywhere you look is a Vessel. So everybody who bought a Vessel, you save 2.5% on the VAT that you would have paid on the camera. How much that work out to? Right? Only a set of new cars on the road. We almost reached the PEG if we're not there already. How much savings is that 2.5% on a three and four hundred thousand dollar vehicle or more? He wasn't saving that under Mrs. Basad. He says, the cost of living was better under Kamala. And she was the best prime minister ever. Ask her to name the 106 schools. She can't even name the 106 schools. And that argument was rubbished comprehensively in the parliament in, the, in May of 2019 by then Minister of Education, uh, Anthony Garcia. 
in response to a contribution by former minister, Tim Gopi Singh. And Gopi Singh came during the, I believe it may have been during the, um, the debate, the media review. Talk a whole set of hogwash about this school, that school, the other school. And when Anthony Garcia got up, he got the document from the relevant department in education and read all the schools. And there was no response. No response from Gopi Singh or anybody who came, who spoke after Garcia to defend that. But you know what? The sheep. That's why they could have called you a sheep. Because you are intellectually lazy. And just buy that wholesale. Just have a drastic school, all right? No whole fool. But anyhow, let me see here. Catch popcorn and um, cran grape juice. And, yeah, I ain't drinking soft drink these days. I'll lay it off at it. Um, we'll get it here. So, as we speak, well, he probably that interview is finished. Gary always makes it a point to put on his Facebook page where he's going to be in the media, right? So, yesterday he put last evening. Good evening, everyone. I'm on TV6 from 6.05 a.m. And then I'm on Power 102 from 7.05 a.m. So, any media house that invites him to speak, he's only too happy to. Yeah? Only too happy. Try to wonder, yeah, nothing to do. This man will be on media whole day, TV and radio, talking the same talk. Don't know who they're trying to fool. Two days ago, good morning, everyone. I'm on WESN, 7.05 a.m. And then I'm on Tobago Updates from 7.45 this morning. Mm -hmm. Anyhow. Sunday, he was with Fall Street and Uncle Tom on the street 919 FM. And so he continues. So the headline of today's Guardian, Jack wants to make peace. So Mr. Wana has decided that he wants to be mediator because whatever promise, I don't know, whatever promise was made to him should the UNC get back into power is now in jeopardy because they recognized, everybody it seems except, except Julian John recognizes that in order for the UNC to win the next election, there needs to be some sort of accommodation because the 300 plus thousand that Kamala boasting about supporters they have is not sufficient for them to win an election. Oh, here's what concerns, what, what, what baffles me. Everybody beside Julian, according to Gary, is of the view that the UNC could win, cannot win the election on their own, and they need, they need a repeat of 2010. So we saw in 2020, they didn't win. Right? But how, why, why do you need an accommodation? Why do you need a, a, a coalition to beat the PNM in 2025? When, according to you, all the economy is in shambles. When, according to you, all everybody hate the PNM. When, according to you, all crime is at an all-time high and it is untenable and people are fed up. When we have the cost of living in Trinidad and Tobago is so high. When we have so many people living below the poverty line. Um, when it is that hundreds of thousands of people have lost their jobs in the last eight, almost nine years. You're telling me in the face of all of that. You still need to form a, a, an accommodation or a coalition to be the PNM after such horrible and terrible governance. After Rowley and, and, and Imbut mash up the economy, they mash up the country because every day you go on social media, you hear the supporters of that party repeating the same thing. Rowley mash up the country. Look at the state of the country today. Well, if that is the case, it should be very easy for you all to win the election on your own. So we're trying to say that the, the rest of the population who are not UNC, um, they're not seeing what you're all seeing. They're not suffering too. They're not catching the nenen too. The shortage of forex. You can't get forex and thing and, and, and Rowley only for the 1% and blah, blah, blah. And all of that and all this still need to form a coalition to be the PNM. Hmm. Like the PNM have some magic something, but I don't understand. In any other country, such a horrible performance on the part of our government, they would have been gone a long time. But, in, but the People's Partnership, which the UNC supporters would have you believe was the best government ever in this country's history, when we were living in a veritable utopia, the cost of living was down, crime was down, everything was good. And yet still, the PNM didn't need to form a coalition to beat all that. One term? One term? But the, but the PNM performing worse than according to all that. And all they need to form a coalition to beat them. Okay. That makes it that maths not maths in that English not English in 
that science not science in unless of course you are a, you hold a degree in camera mathematics camera physics camera science or something it makes sense to them not making no sense to me but again every time they open the model they continue to do is to demonstrate anyway so in the face of what is instructive and of note to me is that in the face of Mrs. Pasadi Sessa making this statement about when Pande, under the Pande time, um, they used to refer to the, the supporters as sheep um, and treat them as sheep, and she was so upset. Is that she has taken a lot of licks, right, from both within her party and outside of her party for that, for that comment. And normally when she's under attack or she's under siege, the minions would come and rush to her defense to try and help her. But nobody has come to her defense in the face of that. I have not seen or heard anybody from the UNC come and say, yes, that is true. Where is Munilal? Why hasn't he come to the aid, to the rescue of his dear leader? He was there in that time from since 95 come forward. Why hasn't he loved, even though he loved to talk to the media, why hasn't he called up I-95? I'm sure Dale and Tony would love to have a conversation with him. Why hasn't he called um, a press conference? Why hasn't he volunteered to host the midweek con um, press conference or whatever it is so that he could defend his daily leader and say, yes, that is true. People may be upset, but the fact is, yes, that is how they used to refer to the, the membership and treat them. Nobody has come out to support her. What instead they do, they try to deflect. So the dog liar who, can, who fancies himself to be her knight in shining armor, because he can't speak to that issue. He will come and do a live and bad talk, Dr. Rowley, and say, Dr. Rowley, bro, he's this and wrong. He's a lazy, this and wrong. He's wrong. To deflect from that. But one person who was not prepared to allow Mrs. Pasabi Sessa's statement to go unchallenged is one Rashtan Pari, the man who is fancied to be a good candidate to replace Pasabi Sessa as the political leader of the UNC. I remind you all that Mr. Pari was once upon a time. PNM, and for whatever reason, he decided to leave and join the house of ill repute. And so he finds himself in the conundrum that he's in today. But I imagine this most recent post that he put out will earn him no stripes, no favors within the UNC, in fact. In fact, anyway, so Mr. Pare puts out a, a post. Um, let me see if I get it here. Not that post. The legacy of Mr. Pandey must be protected. Throughout his public life of more than 50 years, Basdeo Pandey exemplified servant leadership. Mr. Pandey struggled unceasingly for employees in the sugar industry, the most downtrodden and exploited in the country and for workers generally. He joined others, most significantly George Weeks, to advance workers' causes and foster ethnic unity and, cl and class consciousness. He promoted working class clauses or causes rather in parliament, both as prime minister and as long as a long serving opposition leader. And at the behest of the PNM government, Mr. Pandey was beaten and jailed in 1975 when he, along with other trade union leaders and oppressed workers, publicly demonstrated to promote issues relevant to oil, sugar, and other industries. Years later, he was again imprisoned when the PNM administration manipulated a senior judicial officer to find him guilty on trumped up charges. All right, so that's where you and I will, will part ways, Mr. Mr. Parry, and you'll lose some stripes there with that nonsense. The PNM administration manipulated a senior judicial officer to find him guilty. All right. Okay, rush done. For decades, Mr. Pandey displayed his super leadership by sharing his vision and mobilizing support, even if it took place, um, even if it took place to a few people in a in a humble home, lit with a flambeau. He goes on to, to sing Mr. Pandey's praises. Our nation must be forever conscious and appreciative of Mr. Pandey's extraordinary vision and courageous leadership. We must share that purpose with others, especially the youth entering public life. This is the kicker. We must never permit anyone to undermine and disparage Mr. Pandey's proud legacy, because in doing so, we demoralize the best version of ourselves and our capacity to reach the fullest promise of our nation. We owe a lot to Mr. Pandey. We must uphold his memory by standing up to those who would belittle and mock his life's good. And we know that is directed to one Kamala Pasadi Sessa. 
So her member of parliament for Mayaro is standing up to her and is challenging the comments and the statements that she made that under Mr. Pandey's reign, that the membership of the party, the rank and file, were considered to be and treated as sheep. And we know Mrs. Pasabi Sessa doesn't take too well to criticism, particularly when that criticism comes from within. So it is indicative to me that this is yet another um, more proof that all is not well within the House of the Rising Sun, despite the only unity talk and we must come together and come together. And you can't even come together in your own house. Right? You can't even come together in your own house. Yet another example, Rushton decided that he wants to put his own line, he wants to hang his own line in the front yard too. Yeah? Because it didn't have enough room on the, on the, on the one that the party put. So he wants his separate line in the front yard to hang his duty there. Well, boy, all you bring out, all you hang line, hang line, man. It's a big yard. Bring it. Bring it. <clears throat> I have plenty of this. Are we only too happy to rock back and take in issue? I mean, I ain't think it have nothing showing in movie tom right now to come to compare with this. Now, I see Doc, the PM say, don't be don't be fooled by the um, the shenanigans and so on. Eh? Um, and as I heard Mr. Mr. Yates say on, and I think it was I-95, um, don't put that past them because they could be bust up now, all the dirty linen and out in the public. And then Mr. Warner comes in to try and make peace. And then they come back together and hold hands and sing Kumbaya and all of that. And then all is well. But you see, that will only that could only work for their membership, their dwindling membership. Despite the fact that they want to pretend, oh, we still have 300,000 people support. No, you don't. Because the up and coming UNC supporters, the young, the younger cohort of UNC supporters, they are not sheep. They didn't grow up in the in the Pandey era, right? Some of them are thinkers. And they owe no loyalty to Kamala Pasad Bisesa. Right? So when if the arguments that she would put forward for having lost the election in 2015 and 2020, while she could sell that loop to the older generation of the UNC, this new generation ain't buying that. Because they desperately want to see their party in power again. And they realize, they acknowledge that that will not happen under Kamla Pasad Pisesa. And not just Kamla. Unless you get rid of baggage like Rudal Munila, Barry Padra. I would even go so far as to add Saddam Hussein, who has been very quiet in the last few days. Right? You need to get rid of people like that. Julian John, um, Wade Mark, definitely Anil Roberts, <coughs> David Nakin. So many of them, Ravi Ratiram, Arnold Ram, almost the whole, the entire opposition. The only person I still have some respect for, and he disappoints me at times, on that side, is Lakram Bodo. And I, and I say respect for because when, when you listen to some of his contributions in the, in the parliament, it is not overwhelmed with racial, but not racial, sorry, with, with political attacks. If we're dealing with a particular topic, he will speak to that topic. He might show a little jab, depending on what, and normally he, only, he would mostly speak when they're dealing with issues of health, him being a doctor. But otherwise, they're not. you know, Pare used to be like that once upon a time and when he first came in. But now he get too big for his britches and he, he joined the bandwagon and the bad talk and yeah. But I had lost respect for Black Rambodo back when he was, if memory serves me correctly, the head of um, the Children's Life Fund in its early incarnation, when six children died because they were sent to some cut-rate hospital in is either Colombia or Costa Rica, when all the evidence was there to show that this hospital was no damn good, right? that it was a fly-by-night hospital, that there were reports on that. But they created this children's life fund. You know, for, they're looking for points. Cabinet note number one, that was the first issue that they deal with. She loved to talk about that. And she promised the children life fund because she loved children and she loved children. And they put that in, to, in place. But you so love the children, but you love money more. So people who was eating our food, drinking our juice and belching from the treasury and spending the money on foolishness, they couldn't spend that money on these six children. We are sent to this cut rate hospital. 
and they ended up losing their lives. Their parents entrusted you with their care, entrusted you and believed that you would ensure that the children get the best care possible because they just wanted their kids to live. But all they were studying money. How much is in America is now? And how much in, in, in this hospital in Colombia or Costa Rica? Send them so. And six children died. And I think it was a uh, hundred and something children. But when the reporter, I'll never forget that article. I wish I could find it. That Guardian article, when the reporter asked him to give an assessment of the um, that situation where the six children died. And he said, six out of 134 is not bad. Six dead. Six lost their lives out of 130 something is not bad. That's not bad statistics. Tell that to the parents of those six children who today don't have their kids, right? I wish I could have tell that to these children who thought that they had a chance to live. And the family was happy because they thought, hey, the government came to our rescue. Like, they're, they're, they're lamenting now, oh, easy kill and easy kill. Everything is easy, easy kill. They're only pimping out for easy kill. Leave the boy alone. He dead and gone, unfortunately. Died under unfortunate circumstances. But he is not the first. It is unfortunate. And the fact of the matter is that before this incident happened, Ezekiel was invisible to the United National Congress. But you all were fully aware of the, all of the, the criminal activity taking place in that, in that area and neighboring areas. What did you all do about it? Nothing. You didn't care. You, who did, you know who Ezekiel was before that? You know what his circumstance was? But now every time... They mount a platform, they easy kill, and easy kill, and easy kill wanted to be a pilot. And what the other children like easy kill who want, who want to be lawyer and doctor and this, that, the other, and the next. Everything is easy kill. And you only come call easy kill mother to say, well, look, be sorry about what happened. You need assistance with the funeral. Any of you all do that? Any of you all come to say, well, easy kill have any siblings or anything like that who need any kind of um, support to treat with this? How is the family doing? Could we bring you something? Hmm? We come to show our face and to commiserate. You, you need anything? You need help with anything? No. But any easy kill, easy kill, easy kill. That's all they're talking about. Right? Stop prostituting the child's name. Well, you know damn good. But it's convenient, yeah, because it's a child died. And could, hmm, what, what is the, this country coming to by a child, by an innocent child? And Rowley don't care. And Rowley ain't say nothing. So children dying and Rowley had nothing to say. Idiots. And the evidence is there to show that the Prime Minister has spoken on a number of occasions when it is unfortunate the children die. Where was your concern? The SAPGA report that you all commissioned in 1997, which spoke to children being abused and so on, right? And what did you all do? Or let's, or let's start or let's bring legislation. You all brought legislation in, in the year 2000 or something to um, the Children's Authority and all. So what happened? What, what tangible things did you do to stop this... Um, rape of these children. What did you all do? Right? But the only thing they could quote from the, the, the report, supposedly, is that somebody in the PNM um, was responsible for Akil Chambers' death. This report was commissioned in 1997 and Akil Chambers died in 1998. Yeah, but Sabga, apparently, he was, he was a clairvoyant. He was a obia man and he had a crystal ball. He could look into it. And he see somebody from the PNM um, kill Akil Chambers. So he put that in a 1997 report, something that happened in 1998. And the supporters only mouthing that and parroting that stupidness because they wouldn't take the time to study. But wait now. How he could have put that in a 97 report and that happened in 98. But they only too happy to, to, to and talk about the ODP and that means pedophile national movement and all kind of foolishness. Really? Miss me with that. Easy kill, easy kill. Fed up here. Hey, yeah, Jolene, Monday night, waxing poetic. Everything is easy kill and easy kill. What do you do? All the money you have. All the money you're making, you know, made from, from um, according to Gary, selling fried chicken and, and whatever else. Your pocket deep. You help? You offer to help? You know, all they love cameras. All they look by the mother, at least you'll appreciate whoever helped, but carry the whole, the whole camera crew so they could show. Just like when Kamala was prime minister and the, the two teenagers that were killed in East Dry River, and then she went crying crocodile tears. But always forget these things happen. You all forget that these things happen. Children were killed. The little baby, the eighteen-month-old, who was killed, skull cracked, and buried in, in the forest somewhere up in Paria. And his mother killed, and grandmother killed, and I think grandfather too. You all forget that happened under them. A whole family wiped out. 
Yeah, but it's only under Rowley them things that have meant. The unfoolishness. It's totally ridiculous. Right? But, yeah. So, Mr. 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 Parry has had his say. Right? He, he has put in his two cents. So we know there's another Bacchanal going to be brewing because there is the claim that there is a, um, a faction in the UNC that is supportive of Rushton Parry to be the next leader of the UNC. So now we are hearing talk that there will be no internal election before the general election because that is going to be another can of worms. Right? Remember the last one, the, the internal election that they were supposed to have where, well, the leadership election. When Pasadi says so, it was supposed to be the leadership election alone and then the internal election was to come later on. And she brought forward the internal election because she couldn't stand um, election by herself. Without a slate, she can do nothing. Much to the disappointment of Botiwari and Ganga Singh and others who had aspirations of challenging for the leadership. And rather than stand up and speak out, uh, they allow, okay. Well, maybe if she win the election, she will still give you a blight. So we will still be our minister. We will still eat our food. So let me crawl back in, in, in the Zandoli hole and hush him out. As I keep saying, the men of the UNC, most of them who have been there since 2015 and before, can't even tell you what their testicles look like. They forget. They can't remember what it looked like. Because when Pasad Bisasa became leader, one of the requirements, you leave your testicles in the box by the door. And you will only collect it when your term ends. Whether you are a councillor, whether you are a member of parliament, or whatever other position you hold. Take selfies with your testicles, with your cojones. Tell him bye-bye. I'll see you whenever. It's been nice. Because they can't stand up to her. But there are plenty to say about Dr. Rowley and plenty to say about what happened in the PNM. Study what happened in all your house. The house of the setting sun. That's what you all need to study. What's going on inside there? Marsha Walker, tell us. Right? It continues. Every time they leave, you know, they saw our grapes. They didn't get away. I'm read something for you all that Marsha said. Let us see. Let me get this. Right. I don't really see how you drive with Marsha, but sometimes she makes sense. Sometimes. Mm. Right. Where is it? I just say everybody busting shots. Where was it? Where did I see buddy? Right, I think. Um so. all right, we'll come back to Marsha in a little bit. So she said, now that Gary's speaking out against Kamala Prasad, he says the blind lawyer is saying she don't need him to win the general election. Is that why she had him working with every UNC candidate? Exactly. Is that why she had him working? You know, I was interested. The very same people who cousin Gary today, and Gary is at this, according to um, Sir Enel Roberts, Gary suffering from staritis. Yeah? You now know that? It's not now we saying that. Well, they now come to that realization, right? When he was taking credit sole credit for any reduction in, in crime while he was commissioner of police. I, I, I. It's because of me. It's because of me. It's because of the, the, pro, the policies that I put in place and the strategies I put in place. And I, 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 like it's an apparel. Well, I didn't know he was suffering from staritis then. But now, yeah, the same man who you hug up, the same man who come up on the stage during the local government election in a blue shirt and then pull a stunt and button it to show all the yellow jersey underneath that he's still UNC. Well, they didn't know that then, that he was suffering from staritis when everybody else was saying it, but it suddenly, so everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon now. Yeah, I'm not even going to play that for a little listen. Anybody who cares to listen to that, that dribble, I'm not going to listen to it on the on Douglaia politics. It did. I'll spare you all this morning. This is not a, a crave your indulgence morning, right? But you all could go and listen to that. So they're attacking him now, but this is the same man who they were, they were defending not so long ago with the um, meritless. And Gary is the best commissioner of police. And if it was Gary this and Gary that, Gary the great. And today he's not so great. You're not defending him anymore. You're not standing up in his defense against the dictator Rowley. Mm? This is the man who 
you all are you all caused to have the the the, the potential crime talk scuttled because you all insisted Gary must be a part of the team. Gary knows everything that there is to know about fighting crime, so he must be a part of the team. And because of that, crime talks between government and opposition fell apart. Yeah? Because government insists we, we ain't want Gary there. But you all were willing to sabotage the thing because Gary must be there. Why? What's so great about Gary? How many talking points Gary gave to Kamala when it comes to the issue of crime? How many talking points she owes to him? That many a night when she wanted to talk crime, was it not for the, the, the speaking, the, the notes that Gary gave her to talk about, she would have had nothing of substance to speak about or to speak to. But today, mm -hmm, pull your weight. Pull your weight. It can't be that the UNC spending whatever little caca that they have to organize meeting and to organize transportation and invitation and to provide whatever um, refreshments and so on. And you just showing up to speak. And then what? We're supposed to seed seats to you so that you can benefit what you bring into the table. What are you bring into the table, Gary? According to Anil Roberts, other than social media posts, what are you bringing to the table? Let me just give you all a reminder. They say he's suffering, and now he's suffering for that right. You know, right? I just love these little reminders. This is an article in the news. They dated Saturday, 13 February, 2021. Cops warn producer after post on Barrett, don't aggravate the commissioner of police. A man who was interviewed by police at his home for hours after he engaged in a social media tit for tat with police commissioner Gary Griffith has been warned not to aggravate the top cop as this could prove to be problematic. What does that mean? Problematic and they have it in open inverted commas. What did the police mean by that? Yeah? So don't say anything to get the commissioner upset because that could be problematic. I wonder how many people felt the wrath of Mr. Griffith for saying things that he deemed to be problematic. Sandy Grandi music producer Alan Brezan told Newsday he was still not sure why his interaction with the head of the police on social media would lead to such a warning. <clears throat> Brezan confirmed that after his spat with Griffith, a party of police officers from the Professional Standards Bureau interviewed him for hours on his social media activity and knowledge of circumstances surrounding the kidnap and murder of Andrea Barrett. The subject of Brizan's posts. On Tuesday at 3.59 p.m., Brizan posted to social media that after two weeks of information on the disappearance of Barrett, the only three facts established were one, Barrett is dead, two, two police um, detained suspects were brutally killed, and three, the TTPS all the way up to the commissioner of police was distorting all the facts of the case from day one. Brizan said minutes after he made the post, Gary Griffith sent him a message in the thread from Brezan's post, Griffith responded, seems that you have some vital information regarding police officers compromising the investigation. And seeing that you have made a public comment like this, then you should be more than willing to meet with the PCA and the Police Professional Standards Bureau to then submit a report to deal with these elements. Brezan rebutted with his own post. So did a police suspect fall off a chair and die? I hope you forgive my ignorance, but that is a public statement which brings confusion in the minds of the public. We all believe that justice means a day in court for all citizens accused or not. Griffith added, you said that they were brutally killed. Thanks for your ability to reveal what you know. The TTPS PSB would contact you. We welcome all citizens to assist in removing rogue, rogue elements from the police service. And I'm sure that you would not be wasting police time. Brezan said he changed the last point in his post to read. There are significant contradictions in the information volume concerning the facts of this case. Thank you, Gary Griffin, for your contribution on the matter out of sensitivity to the commissioner's feelings. Too late, you already hurt his feelings. Minutes after changing the contents of the post, PSB officers called Brezan to arrange an interview. A little over two hours after Brezan made his post, the officers were at his door. He said they interviewed him for three and a half hours. Police also told him he may be visited by the police complaints authority and other divisions of the police service for more interviews. And Brezan said he was later warned to not further aggravate the commissioner, as this could prove problematic. He added, the comment I made was from public information. Even though I criticized the commissioner, it was in no way defamatory, and it would be good to have anyone describe to me the thought in my post. Griffith said on his Facebook page, he called PSB because Brezan's post was serious allegations. Griffith said the freedom of speech must be balanced with responsibility, but they like to call Keith Rowley a dictator. Yeah, Rowley's the dictator. And 
Look at all kind of things that we saying about Dr. Rowley. Nastiest of things. You ever hear Dr. Rowley instruct to have the, the police go and visit anybody, CID or whoever, and go and interview the people? But this man is sitting as the commissioner of police and using scarce police resources to go and interview a man for three and a half hours because he didn't like a post the man put on Facebook. Yeah? But he wants to be prime minister. So if you could do that as head of the police service, what would you do if you were to become prime minister? Hmm? Where you have plenty more power, what would you do? Would it be problematic if it is that you criticize the, the, the prime minister then? Yeah? So citizens would just be seeing the police pulling up in front of their door to interview them for hours, detain them. Because what? They, they dare to criticize you. But now we want to talk about you all now realize you suffered from steroids. You see, these are the little things that they allow to go unchecked, to, to go unchallenged. They had nothing to say about that. But had it been Keith Rowley or had it been Fitzgerald Hines had done something like that, the UNC would have talked about that from now till the cows come home. Gary, do it. Yeah, it's a, we have nothing to say. And, but he wants to be prime minister. He wants to be the commissioner of police again, probably. No other commissioner has ever been accused of doing such things. They say all kind of things about Stephen Williams. They say he's a dunce, he this, he that, the other. They say things about James Philbert. They said things about Trevor Paul. All these, all these people, they said stuff about. Never heard a story that they tell the PSB or whoever to go and detain these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The man's ego, again, is your mouth. Gary Griffith's problem is his mouth and his ego. His mouth and his ego. They, they, they just don't, they don't know no bounds. The slightest thing you see. I'm going to play this again. I'm going to get this for you. So they cannot even manage their own house. They can't manage an accommodation with just two, with two parties. You expect them to run the country? Look at the fighting. They can't see eye to eye on a simple thing. He vexed because they only invite him to one of the crime talks. He probably thought that he would have been at every one because what he has to see, everybody needs to hear because he is the, he is the goat, the greatest of all time when it comes to crime fighting. There was never a greater commissioner than he and there will never be one greater than he. Yeah, so he needs to be a everyone, and he needs to be a feature speaker because you know what broken windows theory and all them different things. He has the answer to crime. Where well, they put him in check. Clearly, according to he, Kamala listening to Julie. Make sure I see this. Huh? Remember this. Let's give him one minute. Here. Two. Right. Hmm. So. I had to the local government election. I had a meeting with Julie John and Kamala Prasad Bissessor. And Julie was point blank. She said, we do not need you. We do not need any, any other party. We can win on our own. No, anybody could make an, an opinion, but when you have someone who, is, who has the ears of a political leader and who, and she has no experience or training on involvement in running a government, in being a minister, in being a cabinet, your expertise you brought in to guide the UNC is because you are qualified to sell fried chicken and coffee in rituals, and that makes you the, the person that Kamala Prasad is taking advice from. Well, of course we know that he's wrong. Because Julian John was in fact a minister um, back in the days when I think he was still head of the, the prime minister's household. She was in fact minister of works under Mr. Pandey. Um, so I don't understand. I don't know if his memory failing him, but yeah. Fact check before you before you talk rubbish, now, Gary. Please, please us up. So someone sent me something here. They're saying Gary basically took his time to pivot from calling the UNC a party that promotes criminals to blaming Julian for the current tit for tat with Kamala. He's trying to play it down to being a male lover's quarrel, if you would. And when asked if Kamala is fit to leave the UNC and she should step down, and should step down, he simply said that he would be fast and out of place to suggest who should lead another party. Let's see. 
Then there's a video with Kamala where all she considered was doing a press release and not reaching the family. So. When the news broke of that murder of the 12 year old Ezekiel, the leader of the opposition called a WhatsApp group that manages these um, Monday night reports and the opposition press conferences and so on. She called that group. She said, I have not seen a draft press release sent relating to the murder of Ezekiel Paria. I was on that call. No one responded. The honorable political leader said, this death is hurtful. It is very painful. She said, do you all have children? And she hung the phone. UNC. She deserves a clap for that, huh? She deserves a clap for that. 60 something thousand as a $60,000 in pension as leader of the opposition, former prime minister, $30,000 a month as leader of the opposition, $17,000 a month also as, um, as the member of parliament for Separia. We couldn't get $5,000 towards if you know. Hmm? You couldn't get $5,000 as a, especially getting other perks such as um, this allowance and that allowance and so on. You write a check? Hmm. These are the people who want to run this country. Cannot even run a party properly. In fighting. And trust me, there will be more in fighting to come. But the fact of the matter, even if they come and if Jack is able to mend fences and they come back together, they hug up and kiss and say, oh, all is well. Because you heard what she said on Monday night. I don't thought feelings. So even the people who said certain things about me in the past, that's okay. I'm willing to meet with them and join with them. I don't thought feelings. You don't thought feelings. In 2015, when Jack was busting file after file after file, what you said? You're preoccupied with the election. So you're not going to address him yet. But your lawyers are taking copious notes of all the things that Mr. Warner is saying. And after the election, you're going to bring an avalanche of lawsuits against Mr. Warner. Avalanche. Oh, words. All we got was a snowflake. Still waiting for the avalanche. Because go and buy all kind of clothing, whole clothing, jacket. Gloves, hat, boots, waiting for this avalanche. And um, some of us nearly missed the snowflake too. I'm like, that's it? That's all? You can't be serious. Jack told us that you received two checks totaling $8 million for Section 34. A very plausible claim. And you may sue him for that. All kind of thing. We hear about how Ramada Singh and some other fella had you spread eagle in the in the Prime Minister's residence when you're drunk. And somebody gave instruction, yeah, she um. She she ready there. Yeah, yeah, she out of her senses. With all the alcohol she drank, go and fix up. All these things Jack told us. And then he presented us with where on this particular day, the um the visitor log, that page was missing. All kind of thing we hear about, about vehicle going in and, and who was hiding in the back seat and all kind of thing. Make allegations about you and Rishmi and, and, and all of this thing. You and Sue. You didn't sue for that. Right? But you don't told feelings. After all, you blame Jack. All of these revelations that he made contributed to the downfall of the of the people's partnership. You go in and sue. And what you sue him for? Some claim he made about some twenty million dollars. You have in some bank in, in Japan or something like that. That you sue for. But is it that the other things you didn't want to sue because you were concerned perhaps that he probably had documentary evidence to support, and you couldn't risk that coming out in court in his defense? So what did you do? We want that. No, that ain't true. For sure. For sure. For sure. I will sue him for that because it have nothing he could bring with him. But you see them other things? Uh, I ain't taking that chance now because I never know what Jack have. Just like all the WhatsApp messages we know Gary keeps. So they need to walk a very tight rope with Mr. Griffith. Very tight rope. And if they continue to attack, but notice, again, Mrs. Passad be saying all of these things about the need to bring, um, carry a weight and bring something to the table. When you ain't talking about it. So I'm not talking about that. None of the rest of them parroting that, eh? You might hear it from Julie, possibly, because according to, because Gary has attacked her frontally. So you might hear it from her. You heard from Kamla. But the rest of them rushed and run to the defense of, of Mr. Pandey. Why he didn't run to Gary's defense? Why he didn't put out a post? Uh-uh. They ain't jumping in that fight. That fight is Kamla won. She and possibly Julie. The rest of them have nothing to say. They have nothing to say because while the two of them willing to risk it for the biscuit, as they say, the rest of them, mm -mm. they see in the treasury. That's when they thought it was so close. 
I say, ah, boy, look at each other, look at, we're almost there, we're almost there. And then suddenly, yeah, what happened there, boy? Mm-mm. You start to get pulled back. Oh, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? The treasury is just but a stone straw away. Look at that. Remember, as soon as that treasury is open, there's every thief for himself. And the rest of the country take the hindmost. So they're vexing them. Yeah, because remember her pockets lined. And she ain't no spring chicken. She don't know what her tenure above ground will be. How much longer she may have. But the rest of them who young. I, have, I believe they have plenty more years to go. Yeah, come now, man. Come now, behave yourself. Now, what we need is our five years you know, to finish what we started between 2010 to 2015. Right? So they vex. Then she pat down, pat down. We only need Gary just to get into office. So at least she put Farley and them on notice. You had to pull your weight. Okay? You had to pull your weight. You had to bring something to the table. Farley ain't really bothered with them right now. Whatever it is, I ain't they really doing anything with respect to those two seats in Tobago. And I think the spotlight needs to be put more on what is happening in Tobago because we're so focused on the UNC and the Kankatang and the Bacchanal here that Farley and his minions are being allowed to get away with murder in Tobago. Things that need to be highlighted so that the voting population in Tobago understands what the assignment is in 2025. But right now, what is happening in Trinidad is a boon for Farley because the spotlight is not on him. It's on Kamla and Gary. And meanwhile, Trevor and Tobago talking all kind of nonsense. Right? Fighting and still. They're doing what they want in Tobago. People not getting paid. Months after, festivals have passed. People work hard for these festivals and can't get the money. But they say, let me fix this. The PNM was always that time, and the PNM this and Tricky Tracy. But at least the people were getting paid on time. The monies are being sent from central government because you ain't have Ali complaining about that. The monies are being sent to Tobago. But the secretaries are complaining while they're waiting for releases. Releases from who? Farley is also the secretary for finance. What do you know about finance? I don't know. But anyway, he's the secretary for that. So people not getting paid. But all is so concerned. People have bills to pay. Contractors are on the brink of bankruptcy. Who is defending them in Tobago other than they're defending themselves and Ansel and, and Kelvin Morris? But the, the other arm in Trinidad have us so distracted. They're getting away with murder in Tobago. The spotlight needs to be put on Tobago as well. Those two seats are extremely critical. Extremely critical. Right? And we must not lose sight of the fact that we're fighting an election. Trinidad and Tobago. The PNM is not in power in Tobago. It is no longer a foregone conclusion that the PNM will win those two seats. Because listening to the utterances and reading the comments of some people from Tobago has me wondering. Once upon a time, Tobago used to be considered um, the bastion of integrity and morality. Things that politicians could have get away with in Trinidad, they could never get away with it in Tobago. That is no longer the case. That people who before used to stand up for integrity and morality, defending Farley Augustine at every turn, every piece of foolishness that he does, and that his secretaries do, they're defending it. They have an answer for it. But if that same thing had happened under the PM, while they were in charge, it would have been a horse of a different color. Right? All the hullabaloo the they make about is the plane, but they forget about the plane. We care about that again. The plane was only an issue. And the most egregious issue in 2021. But in 2024, nah, forget that now. We ain't concerned about that no more. We're not interested to get the details of that. But you wanted to know in 2021, and all the audit, how much money party spent on audit into the zip line. I showed that could have paid the young lady her 40,000 first prize for the Calypso competition. Seven months going on eight now, she waiting for her money, can't get it yet. But he had money to spend on audit. Two years plus now, this audit going on. You know how much these audit firms charge per hour? So it's real money. Your taxpayers' money that you working hard for when you look at your pay slip at the end of the month, those of you who still fall into the, the tax bracket, the income tax bracket. I right? to pay tax. And when you see this money going from your, 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 on, on your pay slip and studying all the things you could have do with that money, probably have it spending on audit in Tobago. Right? Because he's the prime minister of Tobago. Even what Duke has allowed the ball to fall, to drop. I don't know if it is he's hoping for some, some level of reconciliation with Pali because he realize the PDP is as dead as a donate. Dead. There's no, no resurrection for that party. He's, right now, that party is a one-man show. 
So you might be able to get one or two stragglers to put on the PDP jersey and work with him because he promised them you get him a little change. Now if they only know that change ain't gonna come. That's one change ain't coming. Right? But Fali and they get to now with murder in Tobago. Kudos to what Ansel is doing and what Kelvin is doing now, but they can't do it alone. Where are the other voices? All the other people who served in the THA under the PNM, where are they? Where are where is, is Tracy still in Tobago? Where is Marcelin? Um, what's her name? I can't remember her name. Her name. Um, and all of these others. Where are they? Where do you move? Come on, man, guys. Come on, man. What really going on? We're fighting. It's, it's two. It's basically two war fields. We don't know. Not one. We could deal with each situation in Trinidad because they are, they are in selfish talk mode. Right? They are, they are a lost cause. We're not going to write them off completely. But... Once they continue along this road, they will, be con they will continue to do damage to their to themselves. Meanwhile, the PNM needs to make sure that they continue to do what needs to be done. Speaking of which, I saw last week, this week, we see the launch. We finally started to see the launch of the um, the homestead program. They roll out where the lands have been developed and it's starting to be distributed to the young people. Again, you will recall the homestead program. Two years, government paid tuition in UE. In agriculture, when you graduate, you are entitled to two acres of arable farmland. A starter home, twenty thousand dollars to start your business, along with all of the technical support that you need to run a successful business. So they don't just give you these things and say, "Okay, it was nice. You go and do your thing on your own." No, they are providing the technical support. So you want to go in agro processing? No problem. We will link you with the right people. We, we I think they just opened another agro-processing plant somewhere up in, in Brazil or somewhere up on that side there. There's the one they have in Maruga and so on. You want to go into that? You want to export stuff to the region internationally? All right, we will work on these things for you. We have people who are who are working on establishing markets for these things. We give you that support that you need. 1,000 entrepreneurs by 2025. So the lands are starting to be given out. So all who say, that mama guy thing, probably and the money talking that talk. They walk in the walk. You, you see the media highlighting that? Mm -hmm. That should have been a front page story. Front page this morning, we should have been seeing that picture with, with poster comments and Faris down at Beach Camp. Right? We should have, that should have been our front page. You know what's the front page? Jack wants to make peace. That is the front page. If you're lucky, you might see the Homestead program probably on page 7, 8, 9 or somewhere down inside there. You know what I mean? Hey, hey what is this here? They don't give prominence to these things. Nothing that would show that the government is doing work. Nothing. As I had to ask one of the UNC supporters the other day, a couple of days ago, on, on, on the page, when last you see a protest for water? Hmm? When last you see a protest on TV for water? She come tell me not. I say, don't lie, because remember, we could fact check you. Her response was, you can't protest when you're under a dictatorship. What dictatorship? You see? You see the nonsense they're talking about? When you, when you put the, the truth and the facts in the face, and she it probably never dawned on her, but you know, for, and for real, I can't remember the last time I see her protest for water on the news. You know why? Because Marvin, Marvin is doing his work. Marvin drilling well all over the place. Marvin only establishing um, booster stations all over the place. Marvin, Marvin establishing tank farms all over the place to improve the water supply, even in UNC constituencies, UNC controlled areas where the, the, the the residents of these areas, some of them who are strong UNC supporters, have to admit, yeah, boy, we never had it this good. We never had it this good. But the media ain't going to highlight that. All you might see is a little picture, probably somewhere in the middle of the newspapers, with a caption, right. And a short, short, short story. But these are not things to be front page. This is not the headline story on the evening news. Somebody get killed. Somebody get robbed. Yes, we will, we will, that will be prominent. But the work that the government do it, forget that. Where are Rowley? Where are Rowley? Where are Rowley? Rowley still in there. Prime Minister come back, I think, right? Xiao Chong is in Belgium doing the work of the ministry, trying to promote Trinidad and Tobago, trying to see what new markets we can establish. Prime Minister outside there, but they fine. He stayed too long in Guyana. He should have gone for the, um, for the energy summit, and then he was supposed to come back, and then the next day jump on a plane and go back to, to, to Guyana. And that makes sense to them. That making sense to them. But again, we highlighted for the Prime Minister is doing the work. And he gives an account. 
If you want to know what he did on each trip, you can go on his Facebook page, go on his Instagram page, and it is there. It is there. He not looking to go and post a picture on plane. He not carrying a whole set of going anywhere and carrying the, the, the whole of CARICOM, the leadership of CARICOM, and sit down in, in, in business class so that he could come one by one and praise him and kiss his foot and see what a great prime minister he is. He ain't doing them things. He's about the people's work and the people's business. And as he has signaled, he has no intention of leaving parliament in a coffin. The same cannot be said for the leader of the opposition, who still fancies herself to be a young thing. No, come. No. You pass them days a long time. You ain't no spring chicken. Frizzle fowl, maybe, but spring chicken. He's a suffer that now. So there are a lot of things taking place, folks. And again, I am asking, when, are we, when is the next PNM meeting? I can't believe we're back here. I look forward to seeing in short order now that the PM is back. So that we go to hear a meeting will probably be called next week, even though I'm not, I wouldn't be here. I can still take it in on, on social media. But we need, we, the UNC doing what they have to do. Don't mind, it can't help them. Just like Voices, your government working for you. Can't help them. But please. So I see yes. So that is an indication I need to have. I need to start taking calls. I didn't realize the time had gone. We just get this here. One second, call on. Let me just Hello. turn this thing on. Yes, sir. Morning. Yeah, morning, morning. So I have one or two points to make, Mr. Roman. Yes. First of all, first of all, um, a dictatorship, a dictatorship, if we were living in a dictatorship, Vanilla Allen Chopin mm. would, have, would have been languishing in, a, in solitary confinement in a cell on Golden Grove Road. And would have ended up like Navalny in Russia. Hmm. That is what dictatorship is all about. So having said the nastiest things about Dr. Rowley's father, his mother, and about Dr. Rowley himself, that is what dictatorship is made of. I have nothing to say about it. Hmm. But to my substantive point, if you notice carefully, if you notice carefully, every single Thing UNC says about crime, as with everything else, as a liberal sprinkling of race and racial prejudice attached to it. Let us start with a couple of years ago mm -hmm. when Andrea Barras died. She died around February 2022. Oh, you couldn't find candles throughout this country. <laughs> Candlelight vigils from Barakur, Bandana Mohit led a, led a group of women, hundreds of women through some warners all over the place. Samoa, this place, that place, all in the corridor. Eh? All in the corridor. Can't find candles. And the placards all over the place, going outside the parliament, protesting about Andrea Barrett's death and this and that and that and that and that. At a funeral in that, which at the corner of, in Five Rivers, by the Five Rivers Junction, by the Big Tree. Yes, Peter Assembly. You're right. Take careful note. A young woman was interviewed after. You know what she said? Kamala, Kamala talked at the funeral, and we were so happy to have her there. Yes. <laughs> but we don't want Rowley here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't want Rowley here. That signaled everything to me, and I'm sure to many people, maybe most non-Indians watching on. So it was politics and race. More evidence of that? Does the name Ashanti Riley mm -hmm. ring a bell to any Trinidadian? Mm -hmm. That 18-year-old girl from Tawa, Sunshine Avenue, she died before Andrea Barrett. She was murdered Months before, late 2021, a body was found in a little creek in the bushes in um, Lower Santa Cruz. But you know, none, none of the placards had her name on it. Hmm. 
all the placards that Andrea Barrett's name are washed with her name. Yes, and only when people started talking about it, then as an afterthought, as an afterthought, you started seeing Andrea, you started seeing Ashanti Riley's name appear on some of the placards. But take note, her name was at the bottom of the placard. Hmm. At the bottom of the placard, even though she was murdered before Andrea Barrett. You understand? Yes. She died before Andrea Barrett, but she was just an afterthought. And it got sweeter. Hmm. They even took it to Tobago. They even took it to Tobago, and I will never forget the front page of the Express. A picture of guests who hugging up one another and crying. Hmm. Randolph Barrett, the father of Andrea Barrett, and guess who? Sean Luke's mother. Hmm. And he died since 2006. So it was a, 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 a not just a, a coming together of, of concerned citizens over the high, the high incidence of crime. It became a racial football. So your, your little six-year-old boy died since 2006. But in 2022, 2022, donkey years after, you find yourself in the Andrea Barra protest on the streets of Scarborough in Tobago, hugging up around um, Andrea Barra's father. What is that? And we don't want Rowley in this funeral service. What is all of that? You see, what is mm -hmm. all of that? So, and take note, why you think UNC making a song and dance? about Ezekiel. You look at the pictures of the little boy, terrible as it is, it, it is reminiscent of how Sean Luke looks like. That is why they're making a song and dance about Ezekiel. It may sound controversial. I am not sure if they would have made this song and dance if it was a little boy named Jack Scrap. A little black boy from Lavender. I am not sure. They may have thrown in a little thing for political mileage. But the focus here is how Ezekiel looks. That is the main thing. Here. And in addition to that, in addition to that, I want to say one thing about Gary Griffith. I don't like mm -hmm. to talk too much about him. Mm -hmm. But when you are so obsessed and wrapped up with self, and you are above criticism, that tells me that you are suffering from a major personality defect. Hmm. Where you want to be recognized, yes. you want to be spoken about, you want to be seen, you want to be loved, you want to be the go-to man all hmm. the time. And by the way, we have had a lot of former commissioners still alive. How is it that the media never reached the Trevor Paul? Edward Snan, James Filbert, McDonald Jacobs, Stephen Williams, all of them alive, healthy, and available. How come the media never go to any of them to ask them for their perspective on time? Why mm. is it only Gary Griffith? Yes. The reason is simple. The reason is simple. They are making an undisguised show of being anti rowley anti PNN. Plain and simple. That is what it is. And their party of choice is the UNC. Their party of choice is the UNC. Mm -hmm. And I want to say something about Tobago, but I will leave that for Monday because it calls for a little bit of analysis. All right. Not where people are looking, mm -hmm. but it calls for some analysis all the same. And by the way, the former Minister of Education, Tim Gopi mm -hmm. I want you to answer a question for me. When you were Minister of Education, was there a situation where your son mm -hmm. was seen on Gattaca Street, the corner of Gattaca Street and Robert Street, by <laughs> Brooklyn Bar, beating the, taking a cutlass and beating the hell mm -hmm. and asking a man who was waiting to collect his double? Mm -hmm. And this boy barefooted with a vest on and running away with a cutlass in his hand. And you, Mr. Gopi Singh, 
If you are so overly concerned about the high incidence of crime in this country, did you ever have a word to say about that son of yours? Hmm. But while you were minister, you were talking about, oh, school violence and this and that. Yes. Oh, you have everything to say about school violence. Mm -hmm. Everything to say about school violence. And as a pro, I just want to say one thing about Gary Griffith again. Mm -hmm. When you were commissioner of police, so what's the end of your tenure? Many of us will recall the Police Complaints Authority has submitted a report for your perusal and consideration about a then assistant commissioner who had a very fat bank account, which was derived from personal business, not his salary as a police officer, from personal business, and recommended that you consider taking serious action on this gentleman. You sat there on your butt and waited for months and months and months and months until the gentleman just faded into retirement. Mm -hmm. If that is your perspective and your commitment to dealing with rude elements, even at the highest level of the police service, to crime and wrongness in the police service, well, boy, Dr. Rowley made the best statement I've ever heard him make in a long time. <laughs> Picking you as commissioner was the biggest, biggest mistake, mistake I have ever made. Right. I believe that with you, Mr. Rowley, I will say something about Tobago and Pali Augustine on Sunday morning. Thanks for the Thank opportunity you, sir. again. Most welcome. Mm. So. One sec. All right, so um, Orlando, it's not my phone that you're hearing ringing. You're hearing my laptop ringing. All of my devices are linked. So it's my laptop that is ringing. All right, so and once the call comes through, it will ring through the laptop as well. So. So let me just get this here. Mm -hmm. Okay, we get to go there. Let's see who we have there. Jenny, morning. Hi, morning, Dominic. Morning. Morning to all those who are locked on listening to facts and stubborn things. With regards to Tobago, let me tell you, words do matter. Eh? And you see, when Sally was on the stage of disrespecting us in. Trinidad and the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago was stay all the business, stay all the damn business and the behaviors. That would have made us in Trinidad say, here yeah, what? This is my opinion, eh? Mm -hmm. Let me focus what's going on in Trinidad. And we may have left them alone because what was happening, and they're not seeing me getting any visible support other than the names that you call the and so Dennis, the minority leader, Kevin Morris, and um, the counselor, I think, Miss mm -hmm. Benoit. Right. They are the ones that you were seeing in front fighting. Mm -hmm. You didn't see other people. And with the majority, it looked like to us, again, I'm giving an opinion. We're finally saying this, this one saying that, we just kind of get turned off. Yes. However, it is very important that we bring back the balance and while we study Trinidad and fight for what's happening here, that we give them that support in Tobago. Whether it is we get in connection of, with them or understand what they, are, what they are doing, because remember their culture is totally different than the one in Trinidad, and see in which way we can assist. I think that might be something you all could look into, right? Mm -hmm. With regards to the UNC, I continue to say the military, um, of course, general and philosopher and, and politician, Sun Tzu, Chinese Sun Tzu, one of his, in his art of war, one of the things that he said is if you know your enemy, 
And by enemy, I mean anyone or anything opposed to you, right? Mm -hmm. So sugar could be your enemy if you're a diabetic, right? If you know your enemy and you know yourself, you'll win all your battles. And by now, we should know the nature of the UNC. In fact, the nature of Kamala Prasad Bissessa and those who think like her. And once we know that and we understand ourselves, the one who decided in this country, we will stand up for what is right. Not that PNM is perfect, but we will stand for what is right because the PNM has been standing for what is right since 1956 to now. They have not changed the name to anything else. They remain the same name, foundation, and growth. Whereas the UNC has changed the names about seven times. Hmm. That shows instability and uncertainty. It means that the philosophy keeps changing. And is that something that you want? You want somebody who has values. And you can't be changing your values. Anytime you don't have any type of values, it means to say that you could fall for anything. And again, I'm making an opinion here. If you can change your name seven times or six times, it tell me you are not going to believe in what you started out saying. And that to me is a worry because you could go nowhere with that type of behavior. And when you look at Kamala Prasad Bissessa, that is exactly how they operated. They would have joined with Gary Griffith, who was a part of the UNC. He was a special advisor at one time. Then he became Minister of National Security. Then he was embroiled with this thing with David West. Then he became the commissioner of police. Went before JSC and said that the UNC high ups in bed with criminals. Then he came out of office as the commissioner of police and he joined with the UNC. The same UNC who he say in bed with criminals and they say for the job just six months ago or seven months ago, they joined together. They have one blue and yellow. And the same them is it now. He said, like the hardest prime minister, he ever worked with Kamala Prasad Bissessa. Although he on a tape with Jack Warner saying, she have a five day weekend. And boy, if you want, you could talk, you know. However, they joined together because they're the best thing with Jack Warner. And Kamala saying, we ain't vexed, or we taught him. No, we ain't taught him. We voted. And seven months later, the same guy regrets it is out here now telling we he party can't join with the UNC because of the same criminal activities and all that. So that is when you're thinking in, 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 in the whole thing in terms of UNC changing this thing seven times. Anybody, anything to join with or anybody to join with don't have no credibility, no stability, and really have no morals and values or ideology that could take us anywhere. Is any port for a storm with it. And that makes it a dangerous thing for this country. Because you have the country and the people turn up. One people you saying one thing here now, then we see you here, you're convinced. So we are this and that. PNM is not like that. Hmm. What you see is what you get. Stability, credibility. Why not we know this in Trinidad and Tobago? Dr. Rowley and Minister Young is out there doing the work to bring investment here. While they're doing all that, Phoenix Park has already rented all the blocks and all that under the Minister Gopi School. While they're doing all that, there's so many things that we hear the land is going to be given out in the, yeah, um, the homestead program. But we're going to bring that for the people to see. Will the person, the minister in charge of that get people like you and others to come out to that opening, whatever it is, and carry it and stream it like so people could see? Or will they just depend on TV6 and TTT and CNC3 and those reporters to bring it to us? I'm saying all this to say again, if you know your enemy and you know yourself, you'll win all your battles. Anytime you don't know your enemy and you just know yourself, you will win half your battles. Vice versa, there is to be a balance. 
the PNM need to understand the work that the people, the unofficial social media workers and officers doing out here for love our country and utilize those persons, whoever they are. Because I'm telling you, once they're able to do that, the UNC and all the propaganda, they want nothing with you because let me tell you something, the truth is our proof. And just like how, if you block a river, the water must find a way to reach to the sea. You know, like quicksilver, you spread apart mm. and then it come back together. That is the force. Trip, 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 the bucket will full. Again, we have to change our way of fighting, political fighting. Bring it into the era of technology and social media. Elections are not going to be one just simply walking the road and going house to house. That is important. However, social media is where it's going to be for 2025. And it has to start now. That is all I will say on that. Dominic, you have a blessed one. Thank you, Jen. Will you be on on Sunday? Um, no, I will be in the air at that time. Okay, so the next time we see you, I kind of missed that last Sunday when you speak. The next time, right? So I said I'll try. I'll try to see if I could if I could come on sometime next week, possibly possibly Tuesday, but I'll be back. I'll be back in the country on the twelfth of, of March. But I'll see you right, so, like a bit in between. Right. So and that's what I'm saying. It may be that you're able to do a life or not. Yes. And if you're not, that means we're not seeing it till the twelfth of March. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you see all that space between there. <laughs> Something has to fill in. Yes. And fill the gap for you not being there. Mm. Those things that it might sound simple and irrelevant, but it's real. Because your voice wouldn't be here probably until the 12th of March. Yes. What do we put in place then for Tuesday, Thursday, and our Sundays that the world come out? Mm -hmm. And that is where the strategy has to come from. Thank you, Dominic. Again, and everybody have a blessed day. Thank you, Jen. Yeah. So. Hello, good morning. Dominic. Yes, sir. What's going on? All is well. Hey, look at boy here. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, Dominic, I have told Brad to drink it from boy. Yes. <laughs> it ain't easy. Yes, well, let's get him to when hey, he goes to the Let me ask you a question now. Yes, sir. Is that... Is that dragon deal completed with Trinidad? If it's completed, huh? Well, the, the 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 well, they still have to negotiate with with the with Shell, which is going to be the main operator. Right. So Shell infrastructure that will be used, yes. Because I heard uh, Dr. Rowley say how oh, mm -hmm. he decided to stay on. To see the completion of the Dragon Deal. Mm -hmm. That is why I asked if it was complete. Right. If it's complete, are you asking to go now? <laughs> oh God, any man go now, just go now. Leave it there, you like Someone it. Like, I will leave it here. You just look for it, you know. Um, let me just respond to. Quickly to someone here by the name of Winston Bachelor on, on YouTube. He's saying he has a lot to say about Dr. Rowley. He's not a moral man and whatnot and so on. I don't have time to respond to everything. So let me just correct one thing that you said. Um, are we not fifth in the rankings for the most murderous country? No, sir. We have moved down from fifth, from sixth, to we are now at seven. Right? So it means that we are heading in the right direction. And I would remind you. Lest you forgot, no, you didn't know that in 2013, on those very same rankings, Trinidad and Tobago was third, the third most murderous country in the world. And 2013 under Kamala Fasad Bisesa, right? Our worst ranking ever. So, Dr. Rolly, you see, when, when we were fifth and when we were sixth, the media was quick to talk about that. Now it's going now. We are seventh now. That is not headline. That is not headline. 
all of these supporters of the UNC one and they are not talking about that, you know. They say, well, you know, look, look, we drop in, we drop in further and further down, which is a good thing. For them who do who don't understand under Kamlamatics going up is a good thing. For the rest of us who understand going down, right? So from fifth to sixth to seventh. But you see, I don't put too much faith in these rankings because they have Jamaica below us. And last year, Jamaica recorded 1,393 murders. The year before that, they recorded 1,498 murders. But because they have a bigger population, their population is almost 3 million. That's why their figures look better. So I don't, so when you all want to come and quote these statistics, that, that means nothing to me. These per capita statistics. And when you want to quote that to say that the Trinidad and white crime always going up under the PNM. You know why? Because the PNM is not inclined to give box screen contracts with millions, as Gary said just the other day in his interview on the Observer with, um, with Mikey Key that he refuses to be part of a government that is going to put aside $5 billion to give out contracts, box train contracts that worth 50000 The PNM ain't doing that. So they get the men, the PNM is not paying criminals to behave themselves, right? UNC does that. Hello, good morning. Hello, morning, all right. Morning, sir. Yeah, morning, um... Uh, you know, I, I, it's how I say for you to hear already with Japona. Mm-hmm. Who, who, who say that how oh, come around? The murder is high, you know? How, oh, I can't remember the exact word, but it was condemning some Lanchi government with same murder, you know? I hear, I hear Japona saying that. Yeah. So I don't know if these UNC people living in, um, in a bubble or some kind of thing because the nonsense that they are come and talk. About about Mura and Mura and Mura and the PNM and Mura. But they can't talk about Mura and PNM because they had a minister who was full. Who, 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 who? You remember the sheriff? Mm hmm. And they killed, and here now, it is alleged they killed their own, own people because this man, Sumer Singh, where he lives with Sumer Singh, lives in that area, Ramhara Beach House in that area. Mm. <coughs> Sumer Sum Singh. <laughs> is that was a chairman of the corporation. Plus, they always have more a problem with them because, like what Gary said, but let me tell you something down. Mm -hmm. Dominic could, um, Gary could really lie. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Yeah. <laughs> that one say, you know what I want to say? You remember you were talking about Kamala before, as Jenny said? Yes. And I'll see how I work as a ethic problem and she, she could run country again because she she had a five day weekend and you know, and she always don't went to, um how they call the place um I forget the name of the place where she lives in mm, and then you know this man come out here and say that all background like yeah you see all the things this man this woman is the hardest prime minister you work with <laughs> that man is delusional <laughs> and now here when he come back now and say. The same time that he said that, because he's talking about the election going, mm -hmm. the, 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 um, com, the, com, the, com, com, how do you call it, the, um, the election going, you know, local government. The, to, the local. Yeah. And he come back now, and saying that, oh, he worked hard. Why is Kamala and she holds so long? Mm. He was campaigning. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and what's that? You know what's sad about this thing, Dominic? Uh -huh. It's not here. You know. It's the people that are following him and the people who who support him. Yes. And the media people who are interviewing him, mm. not accept, not bringing back these facts at him. Mm. He just believe them on a show most of the time. And you know, God, God have it that they're talking now because my, my, it might be case. Yes. The mighty kid the next thing. <laughs> that, that blew my head. Very true. <laughs> well, you see, here we go, you know, eh? Well, there's a lot of things to happen. These are will always come back and and get itself open in the public. Well, Paris, Russian Paris is from my area now, but I understand that I didn't, I didn't get it back away. But it was a... Uh, the guy the part where you're talking about, he, he say something, I didn't hear it. Mm. But, but I know he fighting for the leadership, I understand, right? Yes, yes. Because he might have a hand thing of him, right? But let me tell you something, Dominic. We in trouble in this country, you know? mm. So the, the opposition in this country is the most dangerous opposition that I ever seen in life. Mm. 
these people want to bring down this country at all costs, and they're coming together, and they're fighting among themselves, according to you. And even the party, there's a whole fight that's taking place with them. Eh? And they, they are studying the population. Eh? Hmm. All them studying is power grabbing, eh? and they hate the robbery and the PNM, and eh? that's all they care about. Eh? And these strong and them will be talking. They had one called you so yesterday. Yeah. These people are racially to the core. This man said, call and say that all. All you um, <coughs> are, you let a law winner. All you are, you let a But some are this and that and the other. But you know, these fellas, I feel like something wrong with the brain. Can I, Dominic, before I go, let me tell you something. These people that try to tell me that we is PNM and what? Sitting with the Sick of us. Say like if we is called. Sick of us. And we drinking value with you. Yes. But at the end of the day, I tell them already, some of them, I tell them, I tell them, I tell them something. If we is that, come up with a sister, we will never get in power. But the family would have never get a chance to be in power. Because you know why? It's the same PNM people and Afro people that all are crossing every day who help Kamala and them to get in power. Or because, but them will not change. You tell me that in 2010, how they govern. If was PNM govern, so you think PNM will get like 18 feet down it? Or 18 feet? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. That's Munila gets that among the vote, and he's the most, the most strong, the most powerful person, but go in Munila's that constituency. And you will hear and you will see the way people believe that when you are not be treating them people so good. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But these people are cult boy, really, really cult. Dominic, I want to talk okay, and just leave it there. Let's get a take on this man. I don't know what he does. I don't know what he's calling for. He's making himself a, he, he, a nuisance. He's an idiot. I always tell you, Dr. Ray, Dr. Ray, do more for this country than nearly click here as the Prime Minister and then that past year because mm-hmm. of the circumstances. None of them had a pandemic. All the countries, most of them small countries, went to pandemic, went to the IMF. Dr. Ray and them didn't go to the, didn't go to the IMF. And this man studied it. And Ramling, you hear know, Ramling say about the oil and things? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, but if this Prime Minister was able to get, and you did, and you just call yourself a PNM? I'm talking about Marlin and Marlin. Marlin and Dr. Rowley had this follow and end Marlin in those around Dr. Rowley to be political leader. We only go in all time talking this thing. Them fellas and them like something wrong with them and then they bought in this PNM. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Dominic, let Thank you for your time. Most likely. Let me see. Um... <coughs> Mr. Yates, go ahead. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, let me just, as you're not going to be here for a while, let me just pick in something very quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little over a week ago, I'm watching the news at night mm-hmm. and watching Farley Augustine with some fishermen standing behind him. And he's saying, he's saying, in his normal sputtering, stuttering style. Some time ago, I, 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 I said people must mind their business. But I am minding my business in Tobago. Mm-hmm. Listen to him hear what he said. I famously said, this little fool doesn't realize that that statement was directed at Dr. Rowley. Mm-hmm. And his actual words were, mind your damn business. Yes. Correct. Mind your damn business. And he attracted unto himself so much negative criticism that the idiot didn't even realize that he used the wrong word famously. <laughs> it was negative criticism. So what you ended up doing, it was negative fame, Fali. And what you got was notoriety. And the word you ought to have used, but which you just, it just didn't come to your head at that time. But even if you knew it, you wouldn't have said it, but that is what you ought to have said. I infamously said, because it's infamy, yes. it's negative shame that you got. Yes. You got negative attention and criticism. So that is just to show you. It's just, as a friend of mine used to say, a diarrhea of words. Mm. I'm talking foolishness. 
so much for you. So much for you, Fali Augustine. Little Jack Horner and your degree in linguistics. What you going to use in sir? Okay? <laughs> Thank you, sir. You see, all of them must figure they could be orators like Dr. Rowley huh? and using words that here. Let me get this here. That's like Donald Trump the other day talking about interpose. Mr. Chance, morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? I am good in yourself. Yeah, boy. Your, your, your program is, is really getting into the heart of you have people like Mr. Yeats and so many others getting in. That is so very nice. Yes. Very nice. Bringing some very important topics along. Mr. Yeats always on the ball, making excellent contributions to right. and others. But I'm not, I know that you are not there. You know, I heard one particular caller who is just a mischief maker. Mm -hmm. and I know that you are not going to allow <laughs> mischief makers to move away yes. from the structure yes. and the, from your focus, right, of your program. You're not going to allow that. And particularly those mischief makers who's, who is filled with misinformation and disinformation. But there's a difference, eh? Mm -hmm. People deliberately putting things outside there, the food and the sleep. Hmm. Well, perhaps some personal something, and I know you're not going to go there. No, but I, I want to follow up on, and I we have spoken a lot about the, the, the mischief between Gary Griffith and them and Kamala, and um, yes, that is very important. We are dealing with that, but I want to pick up on a little thing that you mentioned the last day when you, you spoke about what is happening in addition to that. Mm -hmm. See, because you have government in place. Yes. And um, yesterday, Dr. Rolly came back in from having um, attended um, two major events in the Caribbean, the, the Caricom Health mm -hmm. and as well as the Energy Conference. And we have to pay attention to some of those things as well. So let me just say very quickly that I agree with you. I followed up on the, the fact that you said that three of our hospitals are up for upgrade of $34 million in renovations mm -hmm. for the Port of State General, the Air Williams, Medical complex and the San Fernando General. Yes, I understand the San Fernando General work has already started there, mm -hmm. and that that to me is a, a step in the right direction to improve the infrastructure. And certainly, I hope they are going to also work on improving the human infrastructure in the hospitals so that the whole healthcare system will operate more efficiently. Mm -hmm. I want to congratulate the government on that. But what caught my attention two days ago. You know, because we always hear about our farmers, you know. Yes. Our farmers all this boiling, they get flooded out. And, you know, and all different sorts of things and stuff. But only two days ago, you know, it, 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 it caught my attention. Because all farmers received $5 million in grants. And only 50 of them, you know. Mm, yes. <laughs> and the whole grants, you know. Uh -huh. $5 million in grants. 50 of them. Right? That is to provide support and an incentive to, to continue to move towards our food security. And part of that, when we're getting, is support and assistance in the purchase of vehicles. So when you see some more farmers with a nice vehicle and thinking, they come just so you know. Yes. It's grants they're getting, and as well as our official folk, you know, they're yes. included in that. And what was interesting to me, since that program was introduced of incentive and support for farmers, a very special thing in, 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 in Trinidad and Tobago, among the Caribbean countries, all farmers and all fish are forgetting more support than any other Caribbean country. Because let me tell you why. Between 2018 and 2023, 200 farmers received $25 million, you know. Mm. You hear that? The big... So why all of that while you're talking and fighting and so on? The government is at work. And as Jenny is very correct, we have to start to promote those things. And I'm not going to stop worrying about it anymore. We have to do it. We're going to do it. Because we have to go to a higher picture of educating our public and let them understand that. 200 of them received $25 million. And the word is grant. And, and I want I want to latch on to the, the, the other point, continuing the point of farming. I want to commend again that we started, Dr. Rowley, for in, um, uh, adding on to our, our infrastructure, the Ministry of Youth. Because I, I noticed quite recently again that the Minister of Youth 
right? He added on another 200 in the cohort of young farmers. And, and there, there appears to be a plan by 2025 to, to, to pass in Trinidad and Tobago 1,500 new farmers. Mm -hmm. And all of that is geared towards the, 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 the concern of creating food security, not only for Trinidad and for the region. Right? So that, that I think we need, we need to, we need to talk about a little bit. And finally, let me, let me say again that I mentioned it the other day. When the UNC was trying to promote crime as a reason for not to come to this country, and seeing all sorts of negative things and creating an international atmosphere of negativity and trying to discuss your own coming. Just three days ago, 6,000 cruise ship passengers were in Trinidad and Tobago. 6,000 of them. And, 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 and they refer to this season as the best cruise ship season ever. Get that? 6,000. And what was interesting and caught my attention was how the, the economy, how the money was circulated among the small man. <coughs> the money was circulated among the small man. And the CSO reported that it is estimated that over the last two months, $640 million was circulating at a certain level. And let me tell you why I'm making that point. I heard a clip, I listened to a clip, where the smaller operators were so happy. They were saying, you know what they're saying? That these cruise ship visitors spending their money. Who they benefiting from that? Mm -hmm. Those small operators you see around there. Hmm? One of the vendors, they had to interview vendors, and vendors were all smiles. And they report us, you say, see this, you see, I want you when they ask me any more, you say, well, I want more like this. She was so pleased. So I am not looking at the, the, the cruise ship industry, merely when people coming here for the benefit that the small people receive. The vendors, the small operators, and how that $640 million circulates at that level in the economy. When the money is moving around, the small man benefits a lot. And I, my concern is for that small man, and that was caught my attention. So, so all the negativity, all the nastiness that they are putting in the atmosphere, it appears that the government is doing a good job internationally, and our cruise ship season is improving. In fact, they got this one, the best cruise ship season ever. Thank you very much, Dominic. Thank you, sir. Right. Give me one second, Brian. Let me just let me just mention this here. So I just wanted to add to something that Mr. Mr. Chance mentioned. Things that you wouldn't see on mainstream media, right? But you would see it on the PNM's Facebook page. EOG Resources is expected to increase its natural gas production out of Trinidad and Tobago by an average of 50 million standard cubic feet per day, or 31%, the company's chief executive officer, Ezra Yakubi, has said. 31% increase. What is a little bit unique to this year is the amount of gas growth we are actually seeing out of Trinidad. That's a significant amount of gas growth at the company level from the Q4 exit rate to the midpoint 2024 guide for Trinidad. You are seeing about a 50 million a day growth rate. So, so that's a little unique. Yakub told the earnings call, told an earnings call last Friday. 50 million. But you know when there is a decline? They run into Kevin Ramner, right? He has plenty to say. They run into Karen Nunes, the share. She has plenty to say. All of a sudden, she's an energy expert. Everybody who have everything to say when it is that we hear in production falling, they quit. They, they call in the media to give a comment. But here it is that the, the head of EOG Resources is saying they are on the cusp of increasing their natural gas production from Trinidad to, by 50 million standard cubic feet. That I make front page. You know the front page? Jack wants to make peace. I go again. Um, just now, Sandy Grandy Hospital to open sometime in May. 5,150 beneficiaries of Highland Road Booster Station. The Honorable Marvin Gonzalez, Minister of Public Utilities, along with Shampa Kojo Lewis, Member of Parliament for Tobago West, and the Honorable Ayanna Webster Roy. Um, just now. And officials from WASA commissioned the Highland Road Booster Station yesterday, and this project will improve the reliability of water supply of persons at Easterfield Road and Top Hill Mason Hall 
Mariah, Woodlands, Mount Thomas, Ronnie Mead, and Environs. So many, how many areas will benefit from that? Pali and Okaman will have press conference to talk about that. No, no, no. I'm going again. Today, Destination Trinidad welcomes the return of the Emerald Princess with 2,916 passengers on board. And over 1,300 passengers are set to enjoy pre booked tours across the island. 1,300. Unfortunately, I saw a video on Facebook last night where a couple tourists, um, elderly couple, were robbed on, on, I think it was Frederick Street or, or one of those streets or Shala Street or something. And the woman really, really seemed to be to be out of it. But fortunately, the police caught the perpetrator. But still, it left a sour taste in the mouths of these of these these folks. You could see it on their face. The woman was winded, unfortunately. And one more thing, based on what Mister um, Mister Chance mentioned just now with respect to small businesses, I didn't see this anywhere in here earlier today. And this is 16 hours ago. The Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government, alongside the Rural Development Company unveiled the local development booths in Pleasantville, San Fernando. These booths are set to become hubs of business fostering growth, entrepreneurship, and local economic development. Remember the Minister of, of Youth Development and National Service spoke about that? That part of the 1,000 entrepreneurs by 2025, the government will be creating facilities. So if you don't have space in your house to do your business and you need space, we will be building facilities where you could come and get space to do your work and run your business. And here it is that we saw one open yesterday. But the front page is Jack want to make peace. Brian. Good morning, Dominic. Good morning, sir. Dominic, there are so many good things happening in this country, and they just don't meet the people. Mm -hmm. If it does, it's, like another, it's another corner somewhere. It is seldom in the, in the, in the primetime news on television. Yes. Imagine, Dominic. San Fernando General Hospital. They put, they put the air condition the entire hospital, Dominic. Mm -hmm. People used to complain about mosquitoes down there, boy. Yes. They want to go there. The people want to go in a private home. A private hospital, sorry. Mm. But today, air condition right through. I, I had to listen to Idi Amin Stewart talking about he didn't move. He wasn't consulted. And he don't officially represent nobody. He's still trying to get represented, um, his, 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 um, what do you call it, representing status for the registered nurses. Hmm. And you hope you open the gate in six months. Yeah. What are you talking? There's so many good things. I watch in, in beach camp, all these young, young people that the Minister of Youth was speaking to, uh, starting up the, 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 um, the, the homestead program. Hmm. And enlightening these youths. You hear it anywhere else? Nowhere. But everything is about Akizel, Akizel, we name Ikizel, Ikizel, Ikizel. Imagine that. Huh? And I to listen to this this woman from Miss Bikini talking about all the painters studying his, his election. Who in November, December last year was telling people, listen, get all your forms. And make out all your application for all your candidacy. Who was saying that? Which party was talking about that? Huh? Hmm. Were you talking about the, the doctor? Dr. Oli is so busy trying to ensure that our gas supply is maintained. Not only EUG, you know, but Touchstone. They are doing an on field. They, they, they already um, had first gas up here last year. And they are doing more further drilling. For more gas to come on stream. But nobody is talking about that. Mm. You understand? A lot of things are happening. The bladder blocks out in the out there with, with, with BP and Shell are drilling now. Will eventually be bringing gas sometime next year or, or 2026. Hopefully next year. Nobody is talking about these things. Mm. But all the negativity is what we have to be listening to. I had to listen this morning on my t on my television to G String talking about key constituency of 147,000. Mm. I was going to ask you this morning what constituency you talking about. Mm. So he decided to to, to capture COP votes and ONR votes from way back in the day. I call it my constituents. 
That is what I bring into the table. I let Kamla back up. Imagine that. <laughs> he sent you to edge your head back up, back up, back up. I will talk. I will talk to you. I will talk to you. But I will come to you when I come to you and I speak to you. I'm coming to you as an equal member, an equal team player. I say, look at that. This is Gary Griffin this morning. But let's talk, but let's talk about Paul Jolene. Well, no, yeah, wait for Jolene. Mm -hmm. Fried chicken and coffee. Fried chicken this morning for Paul Jolene. Mm -hmm. Because Jolene tell him to his face, we don't need you. So nobody must tell him anything. I can have to watch himself. Watch him. She, 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 she out of, she out, she out of, she out of, she too fast, she say. Imagine that. But we will talk, we will talk. The man that wasn't taking my call, but we will talk. Well, I have to wait to see that. And this is the bacchanal that going on. They ain't not even power. Hmm. But look at the bacchanal. What can happen when these people start to see real money after all the fruits of the labor of the, this prime minister and this minister of energy start to bear fruit in 2025, 2026? What, what's going to happen to this country? You tell me. There'll be a feeling frenzy from the Treasury. And this is what the people, and Jenny rightly said, Dominic, we have to sensitize the people and let them understand, listen, this is about the future, the short term and mid term, the long term. That we have to understand that, hey, this is 2025, is a very, very serious voting year. And we can't play fools and be foolish with our finger. Because there are people waiting to eat what we are sowing today. You understand? And we have to be very mindful of all of these things. It is difficult to hear this man speak. But I know Russian Pari, poor fella. That is a day for he. Mm. He, may I not have to get another, another represent, a representative because where is he here? Yes, well, headed that everybody like he and he and he and he, the um, the Hindu community and and Rambali and all of them. He believes he to be on the inside track for leader, but Kamna will deal with him. Hmm. You understand? Yes. He will deal with him. Short in short order, have no fear, because she has done it before and she will do it again, and he will. She's string talking. But I thought, you know, you may have had a chance, you know, but I feel whatever it says Warner does will be able to say because this man is so e egotistical, it is not funny. He says this morning on TV6 that he is in the head of Rowley and Kamala Prasad Misesa. Mm. I in the head. I don't know why I in the head. Because I bring to the table, I, I come in here as an equal member. But I in the head. I have to listen to this man speak. Saying absolutely nothing. I just brain, brain about himself. That he has 147,000 constituents. That he is bringing to the table. I, this man really, really lost it, you know. He's really, really lost it. Mm. And that is what he says that he is bringing to Trinidad and Tobago. Those 147 people who might be on the, who might have voted for COP and ONR back in the day. So he take them over. Just so. No voting, you know, nothing. But he just take them over and he representing them. And I guess you're on another program this morning, again, another a radio, a radio station this morning. Yes. And that is what we have to go through. But this goes through with this man and this UNC. But we in Trinidad and Tobago have to be very, very careful. We know what we have to do, and we have to do it with, with a sense of surgical movement. That is the word. You understand? Hmm. Otherwise, we could be in real, real, real trouble. Dominic, enjoy your, your, your trip. Yes, sir. Take care and get back safely. Thank you. All the best. You too. Jenny.
We have a leader who you can call should be hunchback at TNT. Kamala is hunching over. Kamala can hardly walk. She drifts on the stage. She drifts on the stage. We have a next one who feel he could get provenance. He ain't had no neck. It's like he had just rest on, on something and he face blowing up like a crapo. That G string one. Then it had one we could call A now because everything come out, he mouth is S H I shite. Hmm. So we call any anal. Then I want to tell Ms. Julian Chun, this woman was a woman all of us would have looked at, would have done so much good work at prestige. She would have come out against corruption with the PRQ airport, massive, the biggest corruption scandal in this country. She crying, yes, not one or she knows in the SOE saying it was like a feeling frenzy and blah, 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 blah. No, she seemed to be coming full as she says, like she's the female G-string. But I want her to know that how would they think of her? Because on a program, it was said that a senior member in UNC pointed at she and saved the set, she to clean the toilet, now she go. Hmm. So I wonder if she understands that she will be used for a purpose. Like how Gary was used and gets spit out, now they want no partner because he didn't bring nothing to, to big up the UNC. They still continue with what they have. So that means why he, Jack was there, we would have heard Jack say who couldn't buy a chubby and a doubles, who he sent wife to school in London, England. We would have heard who became rich overnight. Making us to believe that Jack Rona money was a part of that, I don't know. And he was the queen maker, like he make over camera. When the red, the kicky so. Now he are not walking with the neck twist on one side, like he wants to fall down to. So again, I'll go back to my Jolie My Jolie my darling. Let me just let you know. It is considered that he's a toilet cleaner. So all that kind of thing, you pass Kingsley when they're, they're running for the roti and he could get it and he tried to call to you for help, you pass him straight. So you get full of yourself. Sometimes when we see you dressed in the beautiful sari, you look so beautiful. And you have a gala on your neck and you go on to this prayers and this prayer. Miss Lady, you will get used and chop up and spit out because they consider you, based on what we would have called a toilet cleaner. So people who want to gravitate to the UNC, people especially of African descent, if you go there and you don't have no values, you have no self-worth, you're going to be used because they don't consider you, some of them in the UNC, to be nothing more than toilet cleaners. We see what they call me on Facebook every day. We see what they're talking on, on YouTube if you on and, and other programs on, you know what they say about us. And some of them in the UNC, let us be real, they like to talk about the PNM as cult and the PNM as tribal. The PNM people is who does leave PNM and go and vote for anybody else. The UNC at land, they never, they never leave the UNC for nothing. And let me tell you, those who had going to thinking like that, like I'm not them, they do not like us. That is Facts I put in there. My opinion, fact. And we have to understand ourselves. This country is a multiracial, multi religious, multi ethnic, everything. Now we live in here in relative peace. But you see, people like Kamla Prasad, we says, I would have think like her. What they bring into this country is racism. We have never seen so much racism against African people in this country than in 2020. And it was allowed to happen. Under Kamala Prasad, this sister, because they had a whole, you had this man from Alan Carriman come out and talk, he was in charge at all the media thing. And what I was calling African people, monkey, ugly, don't see, all kind of thing. It was allowed under a woman who says she's a mother, a grandmother, and want to lead this country. An Indian woman, she allowed people with Indian surname to say the nastiest thing for African people in this country. I have never seen the People's National Movement done that. 
from the 20, um, 1956. I wasn't there in 1956. But after 65 hours there, I've never seen them tolerated that kind of behavior by nobody. That always preach every creed and race find an equal place in Trinidad and Tobago. On that come land then, in my opinion, like it's only certain Indian people could find a place here, and African people, second class citizens, so like them want to be the new colonizers, they take over from Massa. That why she cannot tell MP um, Camille Robinson Regis, watch me, I have my proud ancestral Indian name. And what you have, you have your slave master name. And before I go on to tell Kama for Saudi Center, Joseph Charles Butler what? he changed the whole Indian proud ancestral name from Magmohan to Joseph Charles because that's the only name he could have taken to make money, the slave master name. He never changed back. He children never changed back the name. And we love the soft drink and all the drinks from Joseph Charles. But he didn't keep it proud ancestral Indian name. He changed it. Take that and all your pipe and smoke it. Ah, God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jen. Hello, good morning. Good morning, damn darling. How are you morning. doing, honey? I am good. Good. You know, basic about the UNC, the collective memory. You know, a girl who was raped in the nuts. Where was Kamla? Tell who was killed in the East. Where was Kamla? The child thrown alive in the suspect as a Joseph. Where was Kamla? The child of Parry, a 14 month old, was raped and murdered. Where was Kamla? How would they forget? Kamla, you're crying now? Using easy kill to get votes in 2025. How convenient of you to tell the little boy to call his name? Hmm. You help them? Hmm? You are selective because you're looking for votes. And, and Jack Warner, hear this now. Is your name cleared? Have you cleared your name to come back home to the UNC? Jack, clear your name. But for 2023, you were up in arms, hugging up Kamala. Jack said, what have you done to clear your name? And Gary Griffith, may I ask a question now? What is he along with you are a minus, 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 only did you string. Because you were to Kamala. She was the worst prime minister ever, but here you are. Hmm? You two drama can in bed. Was the marriage consummated? Because soon after, it comes to divorce. You can't be serious. What is your end game? Are you national? Or are you about not that donkey and the UNC? It's been perfect. They're not, eh? But they, they, they're consistent and transparent. They have weathered every storm. They have weathered every slander thrown against them. They, 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 are, they are prolific in the sense of them. You know what? They know what they're about. Hmm. The winds of change and slander and life came in, came in fear, amen? Yes. But the ship has so many storms from the Dr. L. <laughs> Williams to George Chambers to Manning to Parole, yeah? Watch integrity. Watch it, class. Watch his steadfastness. Look at back, I don't know. But in battering, they found the strength. They dug in. They went below the resources. As Jen said, they never changed their name. You know why? Because they, their name has power. Tell me the Bible. Yep. All right. Remember this thing called Legion? Mm hmm The demons, right? That when you know Jen said it, you know what demons name you know power, right? Yes. We are many. Tell people this. You stealth. There are no coming from, right? Yep. You stealth. You sneaky. Learn the art of war. A castle want to save because people will pick up. But talk to you and come back in. Right? You stealth. 
learn the master's way, play the master's game, eh? be dotish, be blind, be dumb for your purpose. And there's a, there's a, a, a sort of Facebook a page, eh? what is man, Indian man, brought in plenty guns. Hmm? He bought in plenty, plenty guns. I think in Barrett. Oh. Come and cry about that. You know why? It's one of their own. If you have to really say, I make my child not as mine. So if you the parent can say that about your child, Dominic, we'll come and say about that. Hmm. The government have ESP. The psychic, the other kind, they play kind for of for us. Look at you, look at you and see always fighting. They are confused, united, national confused. There's no unison. There's no cohesion because every man rat, and every cockroach one power. And carry on my thing. If people you say in your in, in your in your neighborhood, are they rats and roaches? Because you call people like me, rats and roaches. Can rats root? Rats have no ID card. So they cannot vote. So who the hell would you can ask Gary? Have you gone to the funeral home to get people? Have you done like Saul and voted to, to, to the weight of Endo? Do you have Samuel to vote for you? Gary, take a greasy water juice drink style. And rock so. Them have a good journey and a wonderful week. Wonderful vacation. Bye bye later. Yes. yes. Um, eight forty six. I think I can wrap there for calls. But let me just um see this on YouTube. Winston again. Winston, stop, stop talking rubbish. I mean, even if you had a committee propaganda, get the propaganda right now. You're asking what about Rowley that right? Having sex well, you didn't use that with all them ministers' wife. And have twins in Goodwood Park. I thought you all said the, the twins were living in um Victoria Keys. Where are you from, Winston? Clearly you're not from the north because Goodwood Park and Victoria Keys is two different places. In fact, Goodwood Park is much further on down the road. But you're coming here with your propaganda and you can't even get that straight. Get your talking points. Get get the get the lies straight so that we we will not call you out as being an uninformed propagandist now. I don't I don't normally block people, eh, but let me tell you, you are treading on, on very dangerous ground. Right? I don't know if it is that you want to be the virgin blocked, but right now you're very close. Local elections have shown us that PM supporters are not happy with them. Really? The UNC got 202,000 votes in in December in 2019. In this election, in that last local election, they got what 189,000. So they also got a, a decline. What does that say about the UNC? Does that say that the supporters happy with them? They got less votes with Jack and Gary and the OWTU. They got less votes, Winston, than they did in 2019. What does that say? Since you are a political analyst and you can analyze trends and results, tell us what does that say? Does that say that their supporters and the country happy with them? That they see them as a viable alternative to the PNM? What does that say? Help us now. Because I'm going through here and I've seen all of the nonsense that, you, that you're talking here. Um, bottom line is that if both parties can work together, we can become a great country. Do you agree? There can be no, the PNM is not prepared to work with crooks. And when it is that you all fail to, con to, to call out the wrongdoing on the part of, of that party, that you have someone who is sitting as the chief whip on $1 million bail for fraud, you have another man who was accused before he was even selected as the candidate to represent Kuva North, was accused of being involved in human trafficking, prostitution, and possible misconduct on the boards that he served on while he, between 2010 to 2015. But Prasad Bissessor thought that it was a good idea to give him a safe seat. And today he is sitting in the parliament under police investigation for human trafficking, prostitution, and other things. When you have another man who is sitting in the parliament selected by Kamala Pasabi Sessa after he was fired from not one but two public utilities companies for gross misconduct, 
And today he is sitting in this country's parliament participating in the lawmaking process. The PNM is not interested in working with these people. They have ulterior motives. So unless you all can start calling them when you want to come here, talk about that. When you have Barry Parrott, who's supposed to be under police investigation for giving $135,000 to the then prime minister and can't remember why he gave it to her. Who does that? If you lend a man $500 10 years ago, I bet you could still remember you lend him that and what it was for. But he, he, the prime minister of all people, two checks totaling $135,000 and you can't remember what you gave it to her for? And the PNM must work with the likes of that? $795 million in housing cannot be found based on an audit conducted by one of the big four audit firms. $795 million of housing cannot be found. The issue is raised in the parliament in the presence of two people who were most prominent in that government, the prime minister then, Kamala Prasad the sister, and the minister of housing, Rural Munilal. To date, neither one of them has addressed the issue. Not one of them have come forward to say this is what happened, that, that, this, that what Camille Robinson really said is incorrect. And, not, and you all wouldn't call them out on that. But you all were all up in, in, um, in what's this one, um, Petrochin, and all up in, in the 100 million AV drilling. These are the issues we should be talking about that should be flooded in social media. But you know what social media preoccupied with? KFC increased the cost of a, of a, of a boss deal by $1. By one dollar, we and all of a sudden we begin up doubles. Yes, doubles. But the other day when Kamla was telling us the price of doubles was supposed to go up, where was the outrage? We are advocating for the same doubles. But if in the morning the, the doubles vendor say we're going to increase by one dollar, you all you take anyway. Let me know where. Hello, good. Hello, good morning. Morning, Dominic. Morning, sir. <laughs> Dominic. I went in the oil field at 18 years. Hmm. As a clean-up man, then as Raskabout, a floor man, a derrick man, a head man, a driller, a clean operator, a tool pusher. So it was advancement, but I can't understand my taxpayers' money that sent Double G to military college as he reached the position of captain and they put him in charge of the prime minister household mm. and he became part of the household. He just pulled up selector. He never want to be a major, a lieutenant colonel, a, a colonel a brigadier general or a major general. Mm -hmm. but, but, but like he have a, a something as your skin dark because he attacking Jolene and saying she only knew about chicken and coffee. Mm -hmm. Jolene was a minister in the Pandey government. She will report about the freezing frenzy in Piaco. And when nobody listened to she, she left the work. Mm -hmm. A ritual, see a diamond and raft death. I look at rituals today. From there, she ended up where again. It was called a hat, called a hat, called a hat. She was in charge of you, the court. What wrong with this stupid soldier? Mm -hmm. This stupid soldier. He like them, you know, it has some, they are white cockroach, you know. They're in the same lodging. But always looking down at the bunk cockroach in the lot, and I go on. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, Lord. There for a dull moment. Um, yes. Let me just see here. Yeah, well, I didn't see Ricky come out today, like the playing tag team. So, Tuesday was Ricky, today is, um, today is Winston. I, you know, I, I really don't understand you guys, you know. You, you, you come in here to talk Rowley this and Rowley that. Tell us why you don't talk about the other side. That you had a minister of government under Mrs. Posad B. Sessa, who is accused of forcing a woman to, to perform oral sex on him so that she could get her HDC house. Hmm? Fondle the woman, she, her mother, I think is the aunt, or no, she, her uncle, and I think her, her daughter or something like that. Desperate for a house. And you wanted the minister of social development. And you are being told, yeah, come inside. Mm. Go down on your knees. Yeah. Talk about that. 
when it is that you have the leader of the opposition who has hopes of becoming prime minister again, can in the face of incontrovertible evidence, continue to support two lawyers, right, who were charged with stealing your taxpayers' money in the form of legal briefs and kickback. And on the, and on the basis of an indemnity, they want to focus on that. But wouldn't, wouldn't the, the, the testimony that the man gave, sworn affidavits that he has provided evidence, documentary evidence to prove he gave this money, he gave this money to Ramdeen on behalf of Ram Logan. But only when go come and talk about that. And she continued to defend them and say that that was PNM propaganda. That is why you all they will if they, they come back and forward, you all, you all are the ones who will sit down and say they thief, but they do. So as long as the road pave, I have no problem with them thiefing. Right? Because what they what they thief is plenty more than what they spent to fix the road. You know how many more roads that could have fixed? When they, they, they build schools, so it's okay if they teeth a little something off at the top. That's what's wrong with all but the, oh, the PNM is the most corrupt party. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yeah, Dominic, yes, uh, just before you close, uh, you were giving the guy some, um, some facts about the UNC. And yet, 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 I know you have to remember this one. 300 million in agriculture roads. Hmm. The contractors get paid, not a road to tell me if we as people, the whole country should be crying out against uh, against these people. Because imagine that, yes, the money, mm -hmm. and they want to see PNM as the most as the most mm -hmm. <laughs> Something, yeah, the money, you say something, yeah, they, and you always say, more is less for you, and see, you know, yeah. and less is more. Yeah, the logic is good. Just imagine 300 million rules and, and that continue and, and it looks like it's a, it's a, um, it's a uh, what do you call it, a continuation of them with balancing and space. As we say, remember the school? Yes. You can't find it on the something school. The, the houses, you can't find it. Hmm. And also the roads, you can't find it in space. Them take it at different level in other money. Mm -hmm. Teaching. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like them don't need to study to teach, boy. Imagine, look how they build up NGC money, $15 billion in NGC. Lick up a whole charity, carry up the DL at Shaka Kong to $33 billion, which was $10 billion, $23 billion in five years. Have the highest oil revenue. Borrow money to put in the Heritage and Stabilization Fund. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a, not a budget surplus. And these fellas who talk and coming on, on, um, coming on your life to talk these nonsense, mm. something wrong with their brain. They can't contest another money. Yes. <laughs> All they could do is hide behind some false name sometimes and just push their propaganda. And they aim have the propaganda right according to you. Mm. Just imagine that you got 300 million in agriculture rules and not a road bill. And you know how much thing that's gonna do the money? Right. They always know what they pay them money, they don't spend how much you can do. That's why they care for the money. Mm -hmm. They can't. No time. Because they thief too much. That's why they thief and they get the whole what? Come out and pick money like they invented it. Thief and money like they invented it. Nine million for what? To pull up a, um, <laughs> a fire truck. Now, nah, boy. Mm -hmm. I people in this country still voting for that? Hmm. No boy, this country here you know, we 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 have we have plenty of literature and cult, eh? Yeah, take care of the money. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Last call. Hello, good morning. Hey, good morning, bro. Good morning, sir. It's not to be the last one. Um, you know, just before you jump on that, mm -hmm. I got to jump into the ruminate on um Every time you drive the north on highway, mm -hmm. um, for the nice development on either side. Yes. Let's bear in mind. Mm -hmm. Because of the Indian government is that the close down currently limited and allocate eastern land and plots to former currently workers. Mm -hmm. This was this was supposed to be lifetime untransferable them to have a generation of a, from the land claim that fathers put and win for years. Yes. 
a cell that it was under 20 regimes after the decision was made to adopt money that the intent of those lands would change. People who are complaining now of being exposed and, and having problems with their businesses and so on, as you can tell us, know that the intent of the Indian government is something was corrupted towards now. Hmm. Right? And when they talk about um, what in them people, I would come out in like a not that he like, who took that decision to close down sorry, like this and this. Unless they forget, it was the original cinema and that Dr. Eric Williams said the people of night who told the industry by buying it from it and live and when it carried in them privileges limited, which was all by all the powerful union heads at that time, like the young Simbazio uh, Pandi, and others, right? Who would have applauded from at that time. They take over an industry that was dying and, and on its death knell. Hmm. And that's part in this country that uh, for that spent something years. Let me, let me, I don't want to add that historical perspective to many people, right? To understand how it is that the, that the PNM in governance always thought to have an, a national impact, not just for people, because they all say, right? Because if PNM alone, they, they would have shut down Taiwanese, use hands as they, as they want to, with the eminent domain, and they could have channeled funds. You couldn't, and also, like, and is there an unemployed on the whatever? Well, I, I, I always, a young fellow growing up, you know? Yes. I think that you thought about Dean, a dual foreman or a foreman working on the port. Hmm. But so the court, this fellow used to get back to his team like this to get back to three and four times a year. They were always able to do the largest. Thankfully, you know, moved away from that and has handled the economy in the way it's supposed to be. And only I have two former UN students. One and she and one, but I'm first and she one. That was Damon Maraj and Art. And boss, what this government is doing. Hmm. He was shocked, almost off the stair. Yeah. The man who has said that he would prefer to have the input to minister finance. You understand? Know, yes. And that uh, he is the prime minister. Mm -hmm. Other than the party that the British are not is still a member of the prime minister, the minister of the government. He must stop. And then Vassal Barrett, he more later, has said that this one, this government has handled economy. In a responsible way and encourage growth, confidence on the business, uh, not only here, but up. I just want to share these nuggets with you and our community before you depart on your Thank you, sir. Take care. You too. Most appreciated. The stadium cost 1.2 billion when it was supposed to cost 300 million. You see, again, when Ole come in with this propaganda thing, bring all of the facts. Bring all of the facts. Tell us about all of these things. What would have led to that? The the issues that were encountered with respect to the land is you the same UNC who was talking about oh the land unstable and the and, and, and all of this. These things had to be remedied. And the contractor was was um was a supporter of which party? Look. I don't have the time today to treat with that, eh? I really don't have the time today to treat with it. And then this other one on, on Facebook goes by the name um, Rondell, talking about Dr. Rowley illegally withdrew 
be meritless. Again, when you are coming with your propaganda, get it right. Dr. Rowley did not withdraw any merit list. Dr. Rowley would have provided the Police Service Commission with information that would have been gathered by the National Security Council in respect of certain um, inquiries that were done into the issuance of firearm users' licenses, which cast doubt on one or more of the potential nominees for the position of commissioner. The decision to withdraw the merit list was a decision made by the head of the Police Service Commission, who out of an abundance of caution for the new information that they received, which they didn't have before, when they were compiling the merit list, found it, thought that it would be best to withdraw this merit list because if it is this information that I have just um, received is true, then certainly this person cannot serve as commissioner of police. And I keep asking the question, where does due diligence end? But we see just a week before, what would have happened? You all say that if Rowley had information, he should have keep it to himself and allow the merit list to come to the parliament, as if the merit list coming to the parliament meant that um, Gary Griffith would have been elected as the, the or selected as the commissioner of police. But you saw Democracy in Action two weeks ago, a name was submitted by the Police Service Commission to the parliament for the position of deputy commissioner of police. We understand that that name, supposedly Gary Griffith said, that name was at the top of the merit list for the position of deputy commissioner of police, and that name was rejected by the parliament. When it came time to vote, the government voted no. So the same thing would have happened. So this impression you would like to give if the merit list had gone to the parliament that Gary would have come back. No. The same thing that was done with Mr. Lucas is the same thing would have been done with Gary Griffith. The same way three persons' names were bypassed when, his, when he was selected as commissioner of police. He was fourth on the merit list. Fourth, not first. Three other persons who the police service commission felt were more qualified than him to be commissioner of police or bypass, and he was selected. So stop trying to sell people this nonsense about what if the merit list had gone to the parliament and Gary Griffith would have been commissioner. And I keep reminding you, let us not forget, notwithstanding that merit list issue, Gary Griffith was still appointed to act as commissioner of police. And his acting appointment came to an end, an abrupt end, because Anand Ram Logan, through his lackey, Ravi Balgobin Maraj, went to the court and invited, invited the court to pronounce on the validity of Gary Griffith's appointment to act as commissioner of police. And Justice Nadia Kangalu, who I believe is relative to the, the president, and Mr. Ram Logan had an issue with her being the case being assigned to her because he said he had other cases that were pending under her and, and outstanding judgment for two years and so on and the like. She found and agreed with his arguments that the manner in which Gary Griffith was appointed to act as commissioner of police was illegal, null and void and of no effect, and Gary Griffith's acting appointment came to an abrupt end. So he needs to, when he wants to talk, remind people that, that it was Anand Ram Logan and the UNC. Kamala Prasad could be said, so could have picked up the phone and tell Anand, hey, back off, leave that alone. Leave that alone. Did she do that? No. Proceed, Anand. Go ahead and challenge it. And it was challenged, and Gary Griffith was removed as acting commissioner of police. Let us not forget that the PNM didn't do that. The PNM didn't do that. Right? The UNC did that. The same UNC who went and petitioned the court to overturn the law that made murder a non-bailable offense. For over 105 years, murder was a non-bailable offense. 105 years ago, right, when, when the murder rate certainly wasn't anything close to what it is today, the, the lawmakers at that time saw the need to make murder a non-bailable offense. But here we are today, where we complain about the murder rate and same Winston accent, how come the crime rate always so high when, when the PNM in power? Crime, murder is not the only crime. So when all you want to come with is do it, talk about why crime always the highest under the PNM. Let us look at the other crimes for which you all wouldn't talk about those statistics. But you see, under the UNC, every week we used to get a, a police briefing to tell us this is, we saw a decline in rape, and we saw a decline in burglaries, and we saw a decline in, in, um, in aggravated assault. So we were getting, but the only thing we hear about is murder, but we're not seeing and hearing what is happening with the other crimes. And then they come and talk about the crime always the highest under the, under the PNM. Well, let me tell you, they wouldn't talk about the fact that the murder rate year to date is less than what it was last year. At the same time last year, we had about 106 murders. We're still under 100, right? Still under 90. So at least we're in the right direction. We would like it to be, a much, to be much lower. And the police doing what, what it is that they could. But those of you who have information and say nothing, but that's all right. As always, say snitches as just stitches. Okay, no problem.
But come correct. When you come out with your propaganda, come correct. Dr. Oli didn't pull back no merit list. That was the decision of the PSC. Dr. Oli has no involvement in the merit list until it comes to the parliament. So if Blessy Passad wanted, she could have read the information and said, you know what, we don't submit the merit list already. Let it be as it is. And the president sent it to the parliament. And when the name come, they simply reject Gary. But look at what has happened in the case of Mr. Lucas. Mr. Lucas's name was rejected because whatever information the, 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 the government had, it could have been passed to the PSC, let them do the investigation. And if they feel, well, okay, might, now might not be the right time to, to advance Mr. Lucas's name. Let us leave his name off the merit list so that he has, doesn't have to endure the, the embarrassment of his name being rejected by the government. And then all kind of allegations in the public domain as to why he was rejected. So he and his family now have to suffer through that. Because all you're fine, you're listening to intervene and look. Folks, thank you all so much for joining me this morning. I'm fed up for these people. Fed up, fed up for them. Get it right. If it is that you want your party to get back into power, at least come with something factual that we could sit down and discuss and debate. But all you all coming with a set of lies and propaganda that can be easily disproved. We live in the age of fact check. You posting something there right now, and I could just pick up my phone and just go into Google, type in that, and get the facts. But you all don't care that you can be fact-checked and called out as a liar instantaneously. Instead, you come in and put in your propaganda on the page and wasting my time to have to come and, 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 and make you all out. I just thought, anyway, anyway. Continue, on, continue along that, that line, right? As long as you all are there, there will be a need for debunking the, the UNC lies with facts speech. There will be a need for facts, with facts are stubborn things speech. So you all continue. Continue to give me reason to get up at quarter to six on a Tuesday and a Tuesday and to come here at 11 o'clock on a Sunday to do this. And it will continue until the election. Right? So continue with the lies. Listen, take all the talking points from Kamla and the dog liar and bring it here. And we will expose all you. If you all want to peddle that, go on Underground Report. Go on the dog liar Facebook page. Go on the UNC Facebook page. Kick out the PNM. That is where you all like to, you all will feel comfortable in that environment of lies, misinformation, and propaganda. Keep that there. But if you come here, and you put it and I see it, prepare yourself to be called out on your nonsense, right? So I would to the wise is sufficient. So folks, it was nice talking to you. Um, as I said, I will try to make, I'll make every effort to see if I can um, do at least one live while I'm outside. Um, but those folks I'm traveling with, that agenda that they have there, boy, pressure. I looking like it's some, um, hmm, eight in the morning till whatever time the next morning. So we will see, but, um, Thank you so much, Rutrud. I intend to enjoy it, and um, we will see. We will see how things go, right? So, Jenny says that is the directive. They must get. They must get to people. They um, frustrated and say things. Screenshot it and report it to Facebook. Yes, they could. They could take. They could give, but they can't take. Come good. Do you want to bring? Come with your. Come with your. Your, your propaganda, and we will go two for two. I just understand. I know how to do fact checking. All right? You ain't gonna pull that on me. Tell her like that from since the days of the radio. When I sit down in front of a microphone or in front of a camera, I'm very careful about what I see. I don't like to give misinformation because I don't like to have to apologize for giving misinformation. So I do my research, fact check, and recheck before I come and talk. And if I'm not sure, I'm not gonna talk about it. Okay? So check Olesa, Rondell, and Winston. So, yeah, folks, so again, um, we'll see what can happen. I know Sunday for sure is out because the normal time when I would do the live, I would, I would be um, airborne. So, possibly, possibly Tuesday. Yeah, I'll tell those guys just come out an hour or so just to do something quick or maybe while they're still asleep, I'll be up early and do something. Yeah, so enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your weekend. Keep safe. Try not to let um, these propagandists... Set up your blood pressure, and God's willing, we'll be back. I saw, um, Jen, I saw your request of the minister as to when the next meeting will be, so I hope that we will get a timely response on that, because a meeting, one meeting every every two months or three months at this late stage can work. And also, two yes, let me also add to the list of persons who are fighting the good cause in Tobago, um, Senator Hislop. Yeah, Senator Hislop is also doing human service. With respect to that, I don't know how come I forgot him, but Shampa Kojo as well, and um, Ayanna Webster Roy, and also to Franca Cordner, who from time to time I see her posting stuff on Facebook, highlighting what is taking place over there. And so, yeah. 
So folks, enjoy the day, enjoy the rest of your weekend and so on, and hopefully we'll chat again next week. Well, you see me well. Yeah. Did I sleep or out on the road? Thank you so much all for your your um your greetings and also yes. I shall make it a uh, make every effort to ensure that it is a, a safe one. But of course, if I see any in, increase in bacanal between now and then, if I had to do that live on the road, I'm doing it. Yeah, but fine. Well, I'll have I'll have Wi-Fi. So if I just stop for 15, 20 minutes and just do something quick, I'll do that. Yeah, so thank you all so much. Minad Lazare, Agnes Mondesir, thank you all. Baba Osei, Ruth Trude, Rena Jennings, Patricia McKenzie, Terence Cummings. Thank you all so much.